Bing bow, yes. Like, you know, spook Spoo- we need to spook it up of it today because it's the the Wolf Den podcast, the annual great Halloween spooktacular. spooktacular. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hi. Hey, 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 I was hey. spooky. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> I, I had a lot of thoughts of what I wanted to do today because, yeah, hey, guys, it's Halloween. Hey. Happy Halloween. Had a lot of ideas of what I wanted to do today. The yeah. first one was I wanted to, we were going to dress up. Yeah. We did actually. We did, exactly. I'm st- actually still. I don't my... want to say gonna dress up. We did dress yes. up. Uh, I ordered a great full body Sonic costume. Yeah. Off of Amazon, canceled it yesterday. It was supposed <laughs> to be delivered yesterday. Yeah. It was canceled yesterday. That... And I didn't. I didn't order it late. Right. Amazon canceled it, or you canceled it? Amazon said so. The seller delayed it. And okay. Amazon said, you can cancel it if you want. Okay. So I just canceled it because I don't. Yeah. It, it was delayed until the end of November. <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck am I going to do with a Sonic costume at the end of November? Uh, so uh, uh, it's, a, it's a me. I'm Mario. Yeah. Uh, I'm Luigi. Number one. Pumpkin. The, pumpkin Luigi. Luigi. Yes, because uh, the kid, the oldest, wanted to go as a pumpkin. So well, the whole family was pumpkins. Wife and I were economical and just bought orange shirts. <laughs> put a sharpie over it you could have fooled me i oh thank you really you couldn't tell because the eyes are like this way <laughs> <laughs> i mean it looks pretty legit fun if you fact, squint so we had like a fabric sharpie but a regular sharpie works just fine yeah well yeah you just can't wash it yeah but you, i probably wouldn't want to wash a fabric sharpie shirt yeah. anyway i will say though don't do it the night before halloween because i was smelling the sharpie fumes all day let yeah. me tell you got a good buzz You're high, yeah right now. yeah <laughs> I also put Friday the Thirteenth on the on the screen. There you go. Here. It was very festive. I also wanted to put a. I had a projector. I was gonna put ghouls and ghosts going across <laughs> the background. The video game or like actual? No, like actual ghouls. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but well, then I got lazy. Next year. So here we are There's as Mario and Luigi. Year. We put a lot of work into the show. <laughs> There's oh there, so much to talk about. Real quick, there was a kid who like came trick or treating dressed as Sonic oh. to our house, and as he was like going down the stairs, Mario came up the stairs. A kid dressed as Mario, and I'm sitting there going, "Are they gonna fight?" And then they fought, <laughs> and they beat the shit out of each other. There were we get a lot of trick or treaters here, yeah, and there were a lot of Marios. Really, I didn't break out the hat. Oh yeah, that's but, a good idea. Don't bring oh, I hat. ran. I was starting to run out of candy. Really? So I took the Tokyo Treat Kit Kats that I have <laughs> and started putting them in. And all the kids are like, "Sweet potato," <laughs> and they take it anyway. Wh- yeah. One little girl, bless her heart, she goes, "Oh, this one's Chinese." <laughs> <laughs> Just be like, sure. <laughs> I told her mom, yeah, I was running out of candy, so I had to get my Japanese candy yeah. to be like, no, it's not yeah. Chinese. <laughs> anyway, we oh, there's so much to talk about today. Yes. Like, for example, Nintendo is doing that thing that I say they should do all the time. <laughs> Make a small little little low-powered handheld yes. for, for Bob here. But is it what you're saying, or could it be? Oh, it's wacky. <laughs> Oh, it's Nintendo's, it it's Nintendo's own little wacky way. Yes. Uh, also, a lot of PlayStation 5 slim news. Yes. Uh, there was uh, some news that came out last week that nobody's happy about. Mm-hmm. And today, we apparently, somebody had um, what appears to be actual screenshots of a comparison between the old version and the new version. Correct. So that could be, that could be fun to talk about. Uh, I'm just moving stuff around yeah. here. There's also some Xbox news. They had the partner preview last week. Yeah, everybody was like, you got to watch that. And I didn't. And I had no intention I to. I did. I have feelings some about Some Metal it. Gear stuff. There was some Metal Gear I stuff. I have some thoughts on the Metal Gear stuff. Okay. I have thoughts on the games that like they presented and stuff. So. Okay. We'll, we'll talk about it when we get to it. Uh, along with some other uh, news that we will be discussing today on the Wolf Den podcast, the Great Halloween Spooktacular. The Great edition. Halloween Spooktacular yes. edition. But first, underscore thanks for the sixty nine months. Nice, nice. 
uh shadow train thanks for the five months hey bob i sadly can't watch your whole stream because in germany i'm like six hours ahead but just wanted to say i enjoy your content and i think you should try the mystery levels in mario wonder in case you haven't already i didn't know there were mystery real mystery. there are mystery levels in there i am playing special levels okay so i have not made it to mystery yet but okay. i'm working on it uh 1995 poppy thank you for the eight months happy spooky day wolf boys and respect the lump thanks for the 14 months Hey, Will, who's this other guy wearing the Mario hat? Uh, that's Red Luigi. Oh, okay. Obviously. All right, let's talk about... Why are we here? Oh, for the 4DS. Yeah, but, but wait. Oh. But first... Did you did you move it? I moved it. Though. You want to talk okay. about Switch games? Yeah, Switch we want to talk games? about the free games you get with Switch okay, Online. Okay, talk about free Switch Online games. Yeah. Here they are. Uh, when believe, did this happen? Uh, f- when did yesterday. This happen? yesterday. I believe these I are available now. I did not hear about this at all. Well, I guess you're not a real gamer. I'm not a real not gamer. Real. Uh, <laughs> so three three classic titles have uh, arrived on Switch Online, starting with the Game Boy, uh, Castlevania Legends. Oh, is that I, a good game? <laughs> I don't know. I know there's like two Castlevania games on GBA. I don't remember which one is the bad one. It looks cool. Yeah. I'm down. So give that a shot. Uh, an even bigger deal. How many me, Castlevania least. games do you play a woman? Not many. I've never seen that in a not, Castlevania no, back game. in that day. Yeah. Yeah. Because women were a rarity back then. <laughs> women were, were rare. <laughs> That's what it was. Yes. There weren't many around. Yes, exactly. So they didn't put them in women stuff. Women didn't break that... down popularity until the 90s. <laughs> okay. That, make, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> to me, the bigger deal is on NES, you get the mysterious Marasume Castle and Devil World. Now, those two were never released in north america oh. they were famicom exclusive and devil world is miyamoto's only japanese only game not to come to the nes it's oh a famicom exclusive miyamoto made it yeah miyamoto oh. made devil world i will have to try it out yes when did it come out uh to switch you mean oh no to it to famicom 84 oh that's early yeah that was before mario yeah before miyamoto was cool right but okay. he never. Well, Miyamoto was cool since Donkey Kong, bro. Know your history. Okay. All right. You're, you're right. You're right. But the point is, like, those are two games that never came to North America, and Devil World is a big deal because Miyamoto worked on it. Right. And now right, they're right, here right. in America for North Americans to play it for the very first time because there have been no other ways to play Devil World or the mysterious Morisame Castle. No other ways. No other ways at all. Right. Right. You're, you're right. Piracy. Uh, uh, I will try that. I also, I'm interested in Castlevania Legends. What I'm probably going to do is put it on one of my uh, GB cart readers or something and put it <laughs> on my actual Game Boy. Because that looks cool. I never, I've never heard of Castlevania Legends. Uh, the game is conceived as a prequel to all the other Castlevanias. You follow Sonia Belmont. Uh, I believe there's another. There's a, there's a lot of Belmonts. Wow. Well. I like the Game Boy Advance ones. Yeah. I mean, these are very different from the Game Boy Advance ones. Yeah. I, you know what, though? Looks a little, looks kind of similar. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's only so much you can do. Uh, all right. So that's your Nintendo Switch Online games for yes. October. Nothing spooky. Nothing really spooky about it. No, I mean, Castlevania is kind of... Ca- Castlevania and Devil World. Okay, you're right. We got some spooky stuff. Yeah. Um, Let's talk about the Nintendo patent. Yes because uh it's wacky this is yep. like the the most we so like we've seen some wacky nintendo patents mm-hmm. uh sometimes we see one that's so wacky it can't possibly be the next console right <laughs> like i'm remembering like right before the switch came out there was that weird looking one mm-hmm. that was a controller and the whole controller was a screen Yes. And they were like the cutouts for the thumbsticks, mm-hmm. but the whole thing was a screen. Yeah. And everyone's like, that's what the Switch is going to look like. Right. Um, that was too wacky to be a console. Mm-hmm. This is very wacky, but there's a slim possibility. There's a possibility that this might actually be a thing. Yes. Uh, so this is the 4DS. <laughs> Nintendo recently filed a patent for a dual screen detachable device with the Switch 2 being Nintendo's worst kept secret. Every patent and leak that emerges raises an eyebrow from fans who are eager to get a first look at the next generation. 
Reports of the Switch's successor appearing at Gamescom behind closed doors have uh, since fueled discussion and speculation online as to what the next Nintendo console might be and when it might be released. The Switch has enjoyed more than six years being one of Nintendo's most successful pieces of hardware ever created. With eyes on its latest patent, speculation is brewing as to what exactly this strange new device could be and how it fits into Nintendo's future hardware plans. It should be noted that many Nintendo patents never become consumer products, but obviously some do too. The recent Nintendo patent looks an awful lot like a 3DS, but the device uh, can be split in half. The two separate halves can communicate with each other wirelessly, allowing uh, two gamers to play together on the same device. While connected, the two halves uh, play like a the two halves play together like a DS or 3DS. Interestingly enough, there is also a touch screen on the outside of the console, which allows gamers to interact with the handheld even when it's closed. So I'm I'm very confused. Mm-hmm. How does it close? <laughs> like, is it a clamshell? Is it like a 3DS, just with a screen on the top? I. Th- think so like on the outside it sounds like three screens yes it sounds like it can close like a clamshell but you can also detach the screens from each other so when you did this is this is this is what i'm thinking Mm because like it could also just be two screens like a 3ds but you take the to close it you take the top screen and you put it face up right you know you like to attach it and put it yeah. face up so you can still see it um it says it uh, communicates wirelessly so that leads me to believe that like there's no actual connection between the two screens like on a ds or 3ds the hinge on all the there's wires a hinge. The hinge yeah yeah but this is wireless so they can detach which is yeah. why i'm confused because uh i haven't heard that before i, I hadn't heard that part of this story yeah um I assumed it was a 3DS with an extra screen on the outside. Uh, but if it could detach, then it only needs two screens. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could see the triggers in the close mock-up. I could see a trigger here, and I could see a trigger here. But I I don't... Like, this screen, is that the same screen that we're seeing here? That's what I'm curious no, about. No, it's an outside screen. Is it? Yes. that Because that was my initial thought, was that that is the outside screen, and then you just close it like a clamshell, yeah, and there's a that's, third screen. That's the outside screen. Here, I'm going to put uh, GameSpot's article, because it actually has more pictures of the patent. Oh, okay. I, I would like to and see And it that. actually says um, what the patent says. Th- this electronic apparatus comprises a first device and a second device. The first device and the second device can be, deta- can be detachably attached to each other. What the f- who that's GameSpot? That's yeah, that's GameSpot's transcription of the patent. You're fired. <laughs> oh, look at this pe- look at this picture. Yeah. There's two sets of shoulder buttons. There's eight shoulder There's buttons. There's eight shoulder buttons. <laughs> Alright, that's too much. That's too many shoulder buttons. Yeah. The first device has a first surface and a first display and a first connection unit, which are positioned on the first surface. The second device <laughs> has a second surface. A, a second display that is positioned on the second surface and a second rear surface that is on the reverse side from the second surface and a second connection unit that is positioned on the second rear surface. They could have made so that. We, we, so we're, we figured it out. Yeah. <laughs> it's all it's all obvious. It's that, all out that, there. That could have been worded so much better. <laughs> yeah, no, that I, I that doesn't answer any of my questions. Yeah. It's they said a second surface. I guess they mean a second screen. I think... I don't know. Okay, okay, so first device and second device. Yeah, that makes sense. There's two halves. Yeah. Right. That, I think surf. Yeah, I think surface is the area where the screen is because they also refer to it as a display. So I'm guessing the display is the yeah. actual screen and the surface is like... The gaming surface where the buttons are and where the screen is. I think is they're and... interchanging the word surface and display. I, I think they're saying it twice. I think this guy who wrote this article. No, that's the pat- that's what the patent says. The patent calls it a surface. Yeah. I think so. If we look at the, if we look at this Game Boy Color right here. Okay. Game Boy Color, okay. This is the surface. Mm-hmm. The surface is everything: the screen, the buttons, the speaker, and mm-hmm. then the display is the screen itself. That's what my 
bachelor's degree brain <laughs> is registering it as. Okay. That's what makes sense to me. The surface is the entire surface, including the buttons and the speaker and the screen. And the display refers to the screen itself. I'm thinking like a touch surface. That's what I'm thinking of. Well, that could also be the display. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm saying. I'm thinking they're interchanging the word surface and display. Well, because it also refers to the rear surface. Yes. And the rear, ha what's going to be on the rear? Probably a display. They're not going to put buttons on the back. A second rear surface that is on the reverse side from the second surface and a second connection that is... Uh, yeah, so there's a there's a lot of surfaces and <laughs> displays is what we're trying to get at. A second display that is positioned on the second surface. Yeah. A second rear surface that is on the reverse side from the second surface. <laughs> that sounds like an error. Yeah. You can't... You, you, <laughs> reverse side of the first surface is what they have to mean. Yeah. And a second connection unit that is positioned on the second rear surface. <laughs> It, it's so needlessly complicated. Is yeah. there a link to the actual uh, uh, patent files? I think so. I think yeah. I'm pulling it up now. I want to see if there's any more pictures. Usually there's a shit ton of pictures. Yeah, we got it. We got it. Hopefully, like, well... Drawings. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's so many more pictures. Okay. If only it was easy to navigate through. Them. <laughs> uh, this one we've seen. What is that? Oh, this is how they connect. And there's a locking mechanism of some sort. And then this looks like a... Hi oh, okay. So look, this is like what would be the hinge. Okay. But that's how the two devices connect. Got it. That, that is the side view of this. Yes. Which is the connection, the metal contacts that would connect the top and bottom screens. And then presumably you could uh, detach it and they would be wireless. Of course, it's all in Japanese. <laughs> and you can uh, orientate it the other way. So that's how it works. So, so you can have it. So it's not a hinge at all. Right. You lay it on, you lay it on top. And then if you want to flip it around, you literally take it, go whoop and move it 180 degrees and then reattach it. Got it. So the pictures we saw were not a top and bottom screen. It right. was the same screen. Mm -hmm. but that's not ruling out the fact that it has a back screen. Yeah. We still don't know about that yet. No, I think it does have a back screen. I think that is... That is what I would assume is the second surface. <laughs> or those... I'm sorry, the second rear surface. Yeah. This looks like a USB-C type of... I don't know what the hell this is. Uh, I think that's the shoulder button mechanism. This is the most bizarre picture, I think, with the f eight shoulder buttons. Yeah. <laughs> but that's because you give one of the units to somebody else. Yeah. It's weird. It's bizarre to me that it only has like a thumbstick, but I guess they ha just haven't figured out the control layout yet. Yeah. Would this be their flagship console? This to me seems like a like an offshoot. I don't know. I don't know. Like what this, this is, is the one that they're gonna uh, throw out the switch. I mean, for, if this you know? thing has like ten screens on it. I would imagine it being <laughs> the flagship. Because why would you sink that much money in re in research and development into something like this without it being the flagship? Yeah, I I have to say I'm still skeptical that there's a rear screen. I haven't seen I'm trying to look. a picture of a rear screen. I thought I saw one, but like, I don't know. The, the drawings just made it worse. I know. The drawings make it seem like it's it's the same screen just yeah. flipped. A, like a, like one of those sidekicks that flips out, yes. except you actually uh, detach it and reattach it yeah. at 180 degree angle. Does the diagram have any HDMI out docking ports? It has USB-C, it looks like. There, yeah. There's one picture that has USB-C. Uh, it's a very complicated drawing, but you can yeah. make out the USB-C port. It's un. It, it, I don't think this is a dock. I think this is just the USB-C bottom of of the device. And it looks like there's like different drawings of the same device, like different designs of the same device. 
you know, because you got one version that's like more square and then up top there's a version that's more rounded. So true. Yes. Yeah, I see. I see. But I you know what though? So oh yeah, this is this one is is relatively square with rounded edges. Yeah. And this one looks they both look very round. Yeah. Yeah. And then this is like what just shows you what the thing's gonna look yeah. like. This is very this is very bizarre. This is very strange. Mm -hmm. It's thick. I am having a hard time imagining this being the flagship Nintendo console for the next generation. Yeah, I feel like this is not even like gonna be a thing. I don't think this is gonna be something that's released. I think this is just something they're prototyping, something they're mm -hmm. messing around with. Maybe ideas from it will be yet carried over to the switch too but i don't think this is what the switch 2 is going to be i think it would be really cool but i think a lot of the reason that the switch is so popular is because of how simple it is yeah and this is not this is no, far from this is far simple from it, yeah. this is gonna confuse a lot of people um it would be super cool to just have two switches with you basically yeah. <laughs> you just take one it, it it's taken the whole idea of the switch to the next level because the switch has two controllers on it at yeah. all times so you could just hand a controller over to somebody this you hand on an entire unit to somebody mm -hmm. but this is going to make development really complicated one of the best things with the switch is that you can just put a game on there yeah one of the biggest detriments of the wii u was that you had a whole nother screen you needed mm -hmm. to develop for and this is the same problem yeah. You could just develop for one of the screens, but then you have another useless screen that the user has to take with them. Yeah. That's just not doing anything. It's it seems useless. Yeah. It'd be cool if you can just walk around with half of it. Yeah. Like, oh, I don't need the, I'm only playing uh I don't know, Celeste. I don't need the top part. And yeah. you just you just take the bottom part around. I wonder if this is their way of like trying to figure out a solution to like DS and 3DS back catalog stuff trying to figure out a way to how to make those games playable on modern systems because even if like they let those games available legally you, there's really no good way to play them on switch right now mm -hmm. like you can't have the switch in your hand and like have it you know beam to the tv at the same time yeah so that would be such a such an incredible move for nintendo to be yeah. like you know what we got rid of the 3ds eShop. We're integrating it into the modern account system. Yeah. You can get any of our first party 3DS games on this new device that we're making. And mm. this device will also play any low powered Nintendo Switch games like Celeste or whatever. Also, your Nintendo Switch Online catalog will play on here. Uh, and it, it's cheap and low powered. Yeah. That would be such an incredible move for them to do mm -hmm. uh i don't think that that's something that i would ever expect of them that, yeah. that that's that's too pro consumer yeah <laughs> that's that's too uh that would be too good for us nintendo fans yep nintendo has to muck it up in some way the ideal bob handheld would be great but no way <laughs> I need more shoulder buttons, to be honest. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Looks fragile as fuck. I mean, the th you would expect something like a DS or a 3DS to be fragile because of the hinge, but mm -hmm. that thing's a beast. Yeah. That thing can handle a lot. And and this uh, doesn't have a hinge. It's detachable. Mm -hmm. And one of the first criticisms I had with the Switch was those Joy-Con rails are going to go bad immediately. And you know what? They're very durable they, they were not the things that went bad me no i i never expected them to last as yeah. long as they did i think the top screen will be detachable it is detachable they they have shown in in the part of the patent is that the top part is detachable that's the connection that that that's the connector right there the top part and that's the mechanism that connects the two it's a side view and these are all the pins down here that that would do the connection i mean the screens that's a lot of screens to break yeah I mean, same thing with the 3DS. Yeah. But again, I'm skeptical that there's a back screen. There's that one drawing. I just closed it, of course. There's that one drawing where it looks closed and it looks like there's a screen on it. This one. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm saying that that is just... The front that's screen reversed? This, yeah, that's this, but the top is, is 180 degrees. Because okay. look, this is the mechanism... Oh, I'm not showing you guys. I'm sorry. 
uh this look at the mechanism right that's the connection point uh-huh this is how the two p- points connect and then this is how they connect the reverse way the right. top one's 180 degrees okay oh this this is a good example of both yeah so it can't it actually cannot close face down right It has to be one screen for the top. No company makes a detachable screen that could flip, then spends the extra money on another screen. Well, well, now we no have no company makes a console with with yeah two screens. Even, you remember know? now we got cell phone companies now that are making foldable phones that have like screens on both sides of the foldable screen. Yeah, so, yeah, there are there are phones with a billion screens on yeah. them. So so when I heard that this had three screens, I believed it. Yeah, but now looking at the patent, it looks like it's only two, mm-hmm. which is very strange for Nintendo to want to do. They they're literally going backwards. Yeah, I thought two DS and or or the DS and the three DS. I thought that was the end of their dual screen mm-hmm. days or, or the end of their low powered handhelds. I thought they were just going to do hybrid stuff from now on. But this, uh, I'm excited to see if they do decide to make a dedicated handheld or something that is just low powered. That is not the next switch. I'm excited for the prospect of that. I think at this point, you know, they've kind of like hit their niche of being like the hybrid console or like, you know, the console that you can play at home or on the go. So I think they're going to continue that Mm -hmm. trend. I just feel like knowing Nintendo's history, they're not going to do the simple route and just do a switch too. They're going to do something else. Yeah. Even if they do a switch too, there's going to be something fucked up about it. Yeah. Something weird's going to. Yeah. There's going to be something weird with it. Like, uh, yeah, the switch too. It uses lightning ports. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> something, no, something, something dumb. Yeah. Something dumb's going to happen. And the, I mean, same thing with this. Yeah. I'm hoping this is a way for them to integrate the account system in a way that's exciting that we can have multiple devices yeah. and stuff. I mean, but... they keep saying that, like, that's the only thing they will say is like, you know, the account system is was created to help you know transfer you over to the next system Mm -hmm. and on to the future i'm the look i mean look at me i have a billion different handhelds Mm -hmm. i would not mind a litany of nintendo official handhelds you know Mm -hmm. i would not mind that at all all right so that's nintendo's patent yes uh where are we nick tendo thank you for the nine months happy halloween and Jumanji, thanks for the 17 months. Love you, Bob. Happy to see how fair, how far you've come. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay. All right. Let's talk about the trials and tribulations of the PlayStation 5. Yes. Let's. Because, oh boy. Uh, Sony is rolling out a redesigned smaller PlayStation 5 in November, including an option including a new optional Ultra HD Blu-ray disc drive that can be paired to a digital edition PS5 in order to get digital gamers uh, to move to discs later. But it appears that those who decide to add a Blu-ray drive later on will require an internet connection to play the console and the drop to pair the console and the drive together. A Call of Duty focused site uh, Charlie Intel posted images on Twitter uh, of a Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 bundle featuring a slim PS5, and readers notice the fine print on the box reads, Internet connection required to pair disk drive and PS5 console upon setup. It's a fair bit of irony for a medium that gamers like because physical copies means you can play the games even if the servers are shut down later on. Some Twitter users liken the move to putting DRM on the optical disk drive, uh, with some worrying about issues when uh, many years down the line, Sony may shut down servers supporting the PS5 and the disk drive, preventing uh, preventing the preservation and play of these games. Community notes on Twitter point, uh, point to a Wired story from December 2020 that may, in part, answer why this is occurring. Uh, that article points out that both Sony and Microsoft locked down the software they used to pair their disk readers with their console's motherboard. This may be an attempt to ensure compliance with uh, Section 1201 of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, which it, uh, which is what makes it illegal to circumvent a, techn- a technological measure that effectively controls access to a copyrighted work. 
In that case, pairing the disk drive and the motherboards ensures that you are using a legitimate first party accessory and not one that can be uh, enable piracy. Yeah, that seems like the the answer. Yeah. So it yes, it it it's I heard somewhere that it might be a regulation. It, it's not necessarily something that Sony is doing on purpose, but it's right. some sort of regulation that it needs to be off. The disk drive needs to be authenticated because if not, you can just have a bootleg disk drive that can play any game that right. you want, you know? Um, so that seems like the most obvious answer. Not so much that some people are worried like, well, if I put the disk drive in my PS5, can I not give it to somebody else? Yeah. I'm sure you could. It would Probably, just need to yeah. re-authenticate. Yeah. You would need you would need internet in order to do that. So uh, I don't think this article says it, but it sounds like it. Uh, a lot of people are reporting that it, it would be a one-time thing. Mm -hmm. Like as soon as you set up the PS5, you just uh, register the disk drive, and then you don't have. To, it doesn't have to check like every week that it's. Yeah, it sounds like a firmware yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. But still, I think it caught a lot of people off guard because you know I can buy a disk drive for my laptop and i don't have to go through this rigmarole I no just plug that's it in and... that's the thing i think for blu-ray you might i no. think if you plug a blu-ray drive into your computer you might have to do some bullshit if you want to read anything off of that blu-ray drive i have an external blu-ray player for mm. this laptop and the only thing i needed to do was download a program that can read blu-rays yeah but that that's program it. is authenticating that that thing bring that thing over next week we'll plug it into here and see if i need to do anything if i leave it off if i leave the internet off yeah i'm sure you will because i you know i have a player for this i have a ripper for this now ripping is different i think if you plug the thing in and you rip whatever you want to your blu-ray i think you'd be fine but if i wanted to play a movie i don't think i could do it without an internet i think well, i would need the thing is with a mac uh it doesn't have uh, blu-ray reading software built in mm -hmm. it has dvd reading software built in but they never created like blu-ray reading software right so that's why you have to download a third-party app to read blu-ray discs okay. or to play blu-ray discs i should say okay it will recognize it but it'll recognize it as a hard drive does that make right. sense yes that yeah. makes sense so what is the third-party software uh when it's not lenovo but lenovo lenovo that sounds right it might be lenovo i think i deleted it because it was buggy as hell VLC allegedly works, but you have to like do some shit with it. Yeah, I remember. I, I it was a huge pain in the ass. Yeah. Even the I got a, you gave me a Blu-ray drive for my right, computer a while yeah. ago, and that was a huge fucking thing to try to get. I don't think I try to play a, a, a movie off of. I have Make MKV, though that will rip it. No, I don't think I have it anymore. Yeah, I'm saying that it's possible that when you plug the the device even into a computer the computer needs to do some there's some sort of blu-ray standard that well, is going to try to authenticate the drive no again i don't think that's necessary like some you would probably need something to play the blu-ray yeah the, the blu-ray disc but with the case of a playstation 5 you already have something that can play the uh the blu-ray disc it's the playstation 5 right so all this other rigmarole it was like really unnecessary unless of course it is a registration thing because that's they, what that's i'm yeah. saying it's it could be a reg a, a, a spec of something for the blu-ray spec which yeah. is what they said in the article well no it's for the the playstation 5 spec well the digital millennium copyright act some sort of compliance well, they, for that yeah they use that as a way to copy protect their system software and their games specifically. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. It's, it has nothing to do with the hardware so much as it does the system software and the games itself. Yeah, but the games are running from the discs. You put the you put the disc in. It's yeah. So theoretically, you should be able to just use an off-the-shelf Blu-ray drive. Right. To play the games because it's still just a Blu-ray disc. Mm -hmm. But because of the special software that Sony creates, mm -hmm. you can't. And that software that Sony creates is what they actually copyright. So that is a separate issue. Like Sony doesn't want you to plug in aftermarket 
disk drives. Right. They, they don't want you to do that. Right. But I think even if they were to let you plug in an aftermarket Blu-ray drive, there's going to be some sort of authentication that would have to happen like it would do on a computer. You would need a software that but would work like, with that. Uh, but no, no. Being able to play a Blu-ray movie on a computer and authenticating it is two different things. Mm -hmm. One, you know, one is just allowing you access. The other one is like a legality check in a way. Yeah. You know, they, yeah. Those are two different things. Yes. They're two. Yes. 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 So I'm that, saying both are true. Yeah. <laughs> how? Uh, no, I don't. How are both true? For the PS5. The, maybe not legality, but part of the Blu-ray spec or part of the Digital Millennium Copyright no, Act, no, no. which all it, these companies not, lobby it, for anyway. It's not the Blu-ray spec itself. There's nothing in the Blu-ray spec about like copy protection to a specific console. That's something that Sony and Microsoft do on their own. You read from the article that something about the Digital Digital Millennium Copyright Act. What it, this is This is what it said. Uh a wired article from tw December 2020. Uh the article points out that both Sony and Microsoft, Sony and Microsoft mm -hmm. lock down the software they use to pair their disc readers with their console's motherboard. Right. This may be an attempt to ensure compliance with Section 1201 of the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, which is what makes it illegal to circumvent a technological measure that effectively controls access to copyrighted work. Yes. <laughs> we're on the same page. <laughs> we're on the same page. We may be on the same page, but you are reading a completely different book, it's I think. Too, it's too... Of uh, it's two things that can be true at the same time, but all right, I'm gonna bring my Blu-ray drive over next week. Yeah, and like you're gonna you're gonna see like it'll just it will work. Like it will okay. read the disc. Whether or not it'll play the disc is a different story. But well, no, that's that's important though. <laughs> but it that's important. But that no, but that's still different. Well, okay. Hold on here. Okay. Oh, this might... K-Jack in the chat said, Blu-ray movies... No, no, that's not what he said. Before he said, uh, PS4s need to be connected to the internet to read a Blu-ray. But Original Spiff says, uh, the concern is for future users, years down the road, if someone wants to add or re-download one, uh, this would be harder or requires a workaround. Also, Will is correct. <laughs> So, I'm gonna sign. He's, with he that. literally just said Will is correct. Yeah. The other thing he said was completely irrelevant. <laughs> that that yes, it's gonna be hard for people to 20 years from now get a all digital PlayStation Five and then connect a a, a a a drive to it. Stepped out for a minute, but hashtag Will is right is the same thing. <laughs> It's likely movie companies because of region licensing for Blu-rays. Blu-ray movies have regions. I think it it's it's a copyright issue for Blu-rays. They're being really strict with Blu-rays. Blu-rays have always had really strict yes. copyright bullshit. Even mm -hmm. with uh, it it's also been notoriously a pain in the ass to read Blu-rays on a computer. Yes, which is 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 what I'm saying. I think it's both Sony trying to lock down their hardware, making it so that you need to buy their official Blu-ray drive, and also a Blu-ray licensing thing. That's what I, that's what I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> that's it, that's it for the for the. I don't think it's that big of a deal that it sucks because uh, anything that's going to require you to connect to the internet is going to be a, it's going to be a problem. I think the biggest issue is that even if you get the one that has the disc drive in it already, mm -hmm. you still need to connect to the internet to authenticate the, 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 the disc drive the first time you turn it on. I I think the, the thing that sucks is that it's obviously going to have a proprietary port. Like you can't just yeah. plug it in through USB. Yeah. So that's already, it's, you know, you can't just use any off the shelf Blu-ray player, yeah. but even if like you get a shell 
and like plug it in, you know, get, get a shell for it and get an off the rack Blu-ray player so that it, it matches. You know, I would like. Why didn't they put the copy protection software in the disc drive already? So that when the two pair together, yeah. you don't have to connect to the internet. You know, for during the 360 era, you know, they sold uh, hard drives for the 360. Those were off-the-shelf hard drives, but they put software on it so that it only can work with a 360. So that the 360 could recognize those hard drives. Mm-hmm. So there's a precedent for it. You don't have to register the hard drive with the internet. So Sony could have gone that route, but they didn't. They chose the, you have to use an internet connection route. The Xbox 360 also had a HD DVD player. Remember that? Yes, I do. <laughs> I wonder if that needed to connect to the internet. I think it did. I'd imagine it did. I watched the Stop Skeletons from Fighting like documentary on it. And I, that was a long time ago. I think he said he needed to. I don't know. Uh, yes, I think the biggest issue here is that you can't. They you should be allowed to get an off the shelf uh, 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 disc drive and use it on your PlayStation Five. There's right. same thing with an Xbox too. If you have a Series S, you should be able to just plug in an off the yeah. shelf uh, disc drive and and, and use it. Uh, I don't think there's really an excuse for not being able to do that. Mm-hmm. At least just to rip the game to the console. And yeah. to just authenticate that you've owned the game to run the game, you know? Yeah. I know Microsoft is trying to come up with, like, some workaround rigmarole for that, for the Series mm-hmm. S. When just making a disk drive would be the easiest solution. Yeah. It, it, it's, uh... I guess Microsoft wants you to buy the more expensive Well, they want you Xbox. to get Game Pass. Or, or to get Game Pass. Um... That's the biggest issue, but I've already been mad about that. So, yeah. so the, new, the new thing to be mad about is that you need to connect to the internet. It's ridiculous that if you get the one with the disk drive, it still needs to connect to the internet to authenticate the thing, yeah. which was proven by the, like, the our, bundle. Ours don't need that. We have the old version. Yeah. Like You don't need to authenticate the disk drive there. So I don't know what w- one of the consoles you need to connect to the internet the first time you play it, or do they stop doing that? I mean, both of them you do. Okay. Um, Because you got to, like, sign up for all their bullshit and, like, get all the updates and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, there's people who, like, live on a military base with no internet. Yeah. (laughs) They need to, like, you know, uh, they want to play their games, but they can't connect to the internet, which is uh, rough to play games with no internet these Mm -hmm. days. Um, Okay, so that's uh, PlayStation 5 Slim, but we're not done yet. No. Because we got some real world first looks. Yes. Uh, the new PS. Oh, sorry. Uh, the launch of the Slimmer PS5 is just weeks away, and one user seems to have already gotten their hands on the updated console. A series of images posted to Twitter from user uh, Phantom Pains shows the updated console, how it stacks against the clunkier counterpart. What I don't like about this picture is that they're showing it with the dark plates yes. that don't have the wings on the top. Yeah, I think the wing, like when you see the wing, because the wings add so much. Yeah, the wings will add a lot of height, and it's going to make the slim look a lot smaller. Yeah. This doesn't make it look much smaller no. at all. Uh, the new PS5 looks like uh, it'll have a slightly smaller footprint when compared to the original console. Uh, not only does it have a slimmer profile than the standard PS5, but uh, also a couple of inches shorter as well. Despite this thinner design, the back of the device appears to retain the same ports as its predecessor, including an HDMI, two USB ports, a power connector, and an Ethernet port. The images also appear to confirm rumors of the PS5's detachable disk drive will require internet connection. Uh, one of the photos shows a notification that reads, cannot use your disk drive. You need to connect your PS5 to the network to register your disk drive to your PS5. Wait, did he? I think he took the post down. Oh, that was fast. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I wanted to see what the back looked like. I don't think he posted the back. Well, the, the article just said you could see the back. Oh. Because I wanted to see the back. Yeah. Uh, it looks like the white is glossy. I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah. I want to slap some... Well, uh, they said the, the top part is glossy and the bottom part is matte. Oh. Yeah. I don't like that yeah, at all. That's... 
I want to slap some black faceplates on this as soon as humanly possible. Yeah. <laughs> there is an arrow on the main image to click on the article. The next slide. This one? This one? Oh, no, that's a... Hey, dummy. <laughs> Hey, is that the one you're talking about? This, this, it, which is a, which is a fucking picture of a Twitter arrow. It's a picture and a picture. Is this the one you're talking about? I will ban you. I will ban you for lying to me. Uh, anyway, yeah, I mean, it doesn't look that small compared to this, but I think when you see it with the wings, it will look a lot smaller. Yeah, and it does look thinner. I think it might be uglier. <laughs> I think it might be. I don't. Th I honestly don't think it's that much smaller. It's like, not. I mean, I think it's significantly smaller. It's thinner and it's shorter. Yeah. Especially the wings come up to like here. So it's in the grand scheme of things, it's not that much. Right. But it compared to how big and massive the original PlayStation 5 is, if it looked like this, I wouldn't have called it big. Right. You know? Um. Anyway, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I'm gonna get it, and we'll see. But more importantly, Tom Warren on his Twitter showed uh what the yes what the what the horizontal stand looks like. Now there is some confusion on my Twitter. Mm -hmm. This is what comes with the console yes this isn't the one that you have to pay 30 dollars to get no that's just to lay your console horizontally <laughs> yeah we still haven't seen a picture of it actually laying horizontal i have no idea how this would help i guess they go here yeah on each side that is insane that, that looks that's ridiculous. gonna break yeah this looks and get lost immediately that, that what a horrible design and I, I need to know what how this works when you have the disc less version because yeah the disc drive area that accounts for most of the base yeah. yeah so i have no idea how you're going to be able to hold I will this say, thing those pictures do show that um it will stand it will stand vertically on its own without the base yeah this is it standing yeah, yeah. And I guess this PlayStation 5 is probably standing without the base. I would hope yeah. so, because then it would be a better size you can comparison. You stand the PlayStation 5 without the base. Yeah. You don't need it to stand it vertically. It's just slightly wobblier. Yeah. Uh, and then there's also a picture of um, it saying, can't use your disk drive. You need to connect your PlayStation 5 to the network to register your disk drive mm -hmm. to your PlayStation 5. So there you go. Uh, when does this come out? Uh, November something. It'll cost five hundred dollars. No, they don't. They don't say. Also, when's the play? Uh, hasn't confirmed an exact date. When's the but PlayStation it's coming Portal? Out with out? A, it's gonna come out with the Call of Duty bundle. So sometime after. It has yeah after yeah. Call of Duty happens. PlayStation Portal comes out November fifteenth. Hey man, that's not that long from now. That is. Two weeks from now. Yeah. Holy hell. When's my video going? I guess my video will come out the 23rd. Here's the back. Okay, thank you, Garrison. Uh, this is the, the front comparison. Mm -hmm. This is the side that we've seen. This is the top, which does make it look a little bit smaller. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's, it's got uh, less depth. Mm -hmm. And then the back. God, it's just it's just hideous. <laughs> um, yeah, the exact same ports. What's? Oh yeah, yeah, it's all the same. Everything's the same. Cool, same power and everything. Very cool. But is it really? Because like, still, big hunk of plastic. Um. It should have looked like this in the first. Like, look, okay. It it's, should have it's, been this size in the first place. Yes, yeah. it's ugly, but it it should have been this size. Yeah. The the other one is just too goddamn big. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder what would happen if you hook an SSD out of the old PlayStation 5 with games and stuck it in the new one. It won't work at all. There's yeah, no shot to, like, that's going to work. Re-register it and stuff. Yeah. Although my... Oh, this is Xbox, though. I had an external hard drive connected to my Xbox One. 
and I plugged it into my Series X, and it said, do you want to register this with multiple consoles or just this one? And I picked multiple. So if I ever plug in my Xbox One again, those will just transfer over. I think Xbox has the um, privilege of also being a... a, a computer software guy. Yeah, a computer yeah. software company. They They know how to make computers and they know how to make uh, uh, yeah. uh operating systems and mm-hmm. and they're good with user experience yeah. for the most part for the most, uh, yeah. i do think that windows has some bad user experience <laughs> but for the most part it's pretty decent mm-hmm. um they know that people might want to do something like that because they do it on computers too yeah. so why not uh sony does not have the foresight for mm-hmm. something like that and neither does Nintendo, because Nintendo has the same bullshit. You take the SD card out and you try to put it in a new Switch. It's like, no, fuck yeah. you. You got to do some wacky bullshit to transfer all your games over. Breaking news. Okay, what happened? What do we do? Twitch is ending service that, on that, Switch. We have an article on that. Okay. Same right. thing. Okay. okay. Spoiler alert. Are you trying to... Wa- Who here is watching us on their Switch right now? That's the question. <laughs> Show of hands. Uh... Before we talk about that, though, oh, we got a lot of gift subs, though. We should probably talk about that. Dark type, thanks to the 31 months and the 10 whole gifted subs. And 100 bits. He's given us a lot of money today. Yeah. Happy Halloween, nerds. Thank you. Happy Halloween. I'm Mario. (laughs) Original Spiff, thank you for the five gifted subs. 10 gifted subs? How many gifted subs? I don't know how many you did, but I appreciate it anyway. Are you going to cover the M3 Mac supporting mesh shaders? No. No. But I am picking up my iPhone tomorrow. Woo! I got that. I, I have been checking every day yeah. for the natural color. I was this close to giving up and getting black because yeah. they've had black and blue in stock for weeks. Yeah. But I've been holding up for the natural color one and I was this close to just giving up because I saw the Apple event yesterday. Did yeah. you see it? I caught the 10 minute recap of it on the verge. Did you see that it was all shot on the iPhone? Yes. Did you see the behind the scenes video? I where they, did. Yeah. Yes, it was shot on the iPhone, but also at least half a million dollars worth of accessories. I'm sick of people telling me that. Like, I don't fucking know <laughs> that. Like, I don't know how these things are shot. Yeah. They usually shoot it with $40,000 cameras, Mm -hmm. and then also all that other bullshit. So the fact that they're shooting it on $1,500 iPhones is still a big deal. I will say it it was almost enough to get me to update my phone immediately. Because like, honestly, I would just like throw out my camera and just use that. It is pretty fucking cool. And obviously you're not gonna be able to make things look like that unless you light things the way that they do and and stuff. Uh, But still, I got lights. Like, yeah. <laughs> like you know, I fucking know how to film things. So it, it's exciting. And I've, I've seen what other people have been able to do with uh, with their iPhones. I watched yeah. a guy last night because uh, it shoots in log. I was looking at uh, some log format stuff and I watched a guy on YouTube who was filming his a roll with the iphone it looked it looked incredible it yeah. looked like a right and it's a youtuber you know it's it, yeah. he's just got it on a tripod with some nice lighting um so yeah it's super exciting i i film stuff with my phone all the time and it, you know sometimes it looks really good i'm i have an iphone 11 yeah what i noticed is that if you're in broad daylight it always looks awesome mm-hmm. any other situation probably gonna look like you're shooting it on an iphone yeah uh but iPhone 15, if you're shooting it in log, you have a lot more room to make it look like it's not an iPhone. Yeah. So uh, it's exciting, and it made me want it more. I was excited uh, because they announced the M3 MacBook Pros, the M3 Pro and the M3 Max. Yeah, you need, you definitely need. I definitely need, need, but I got excited because that means like the M1 Max are going to get cheaper (laughs) and the M2 Max are going to get cheaper. So this thing, I have the M1. Yes. Uh, This thing is an absolute beast. Yeah. And it's still doing a lot it's still right. pulling its weight uh the M, the the stuff they've been doing with the m chips are are yeah. incredible and i'm also excited for you were the, the chat was mentioning uh the the gaming on on yes the m3 chip uh i'm excited for gaming on the new iphone yeah uh, i'm gonna I, apparently resident evil's out so i'm gonna try that is it out or is it just a demo 
Oh, I thought it was I just a demo. It might be a demo, yeah. but that's fine. I'll I'll do the demo then. I will say the 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 new the new Mac Pros in black though make it really tempting to want to get one of those. So do you but, think they have them in stores yet? I think it's on pre order. Okay, but it, it's one of those things where like you pre order now and it'll be it'll be available next week. Yeah. So so you don't think they'll be on display? Well, I don't know. I, don't I haven't know. been to an it'd Apple be, store in like five years. It'd be cool to see. I'm going tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. It'd be cool to see it. Uh, I will also uh. Just randomly last week, I decided to check what games on Steam are available on Mac. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot. Uh, and a lot that I have already. There's a lot, but some of them you got to check because they don't support. when. What is it? Apple stopped supporting 32-bit software. And a lot of games are yes. still 32-bit software, so they might not run properly. Yeah, a lot of games just don't support m1 or, yeah. or, or the m chips yet um but still lies of p was at the apple event yes so that works yeah um i've played celeste on here before mm -hmm. so that works um i checked today and counter-strike 2 said do you want to download it and i was like oh counter-strike <laughs> 2 yeah so i yeah. downloaded it and it said uh you have to play legacy csgo so remember, we might have yes. talked about this. Yeah. Uh, they forced everybody who played CSGO to update the CS2. Mm -hmm. And that meant that uh, if you played CSGO on your Mac, you just can't play CS2 anymore. Right. They changed that so now you could play the legacy CSGO mm -hmm. on your Mac. So that's annoying. Um, it's the full game on iPhone, uh, 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 referring to Resident Evil. But you can play the intro part for free and then pay to play the rest of the game. Okay. I will probably play the intro part. Do we know if that has cross compatibility with the MacBook? I believe it does. Because if it does, then I'll buy the whole thing. Yeah. Because that would be really cool. I think I'm pretty sure it does. I have it on PlayStation though. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, they're they're doing a lot of yeah. really cool stuff. I'm excited. It's exp everything's expensive. Everything is expensive. But I mean. There's there's a reason for it, but here's where you know cheap ass will comes in. Uh, so I want, a, I, I don't I know I want 32 gigs of RAM and a terabyte yeah. of storage. That's non negotiable to me. Okay. Do I have even have a terabyte? I don't think you do. I just like having a lot of extra space mm -hmm. because I, it always creeps up on me that I run out. I of do space. have a terabyte. Okay. I do everything on external drives. Right. I I try to as well, but like it always creeps up on me that I'm running out of space on my computer. Yeah. So it's something I you know I want to have, you know, good leeway on that. So that's non negotiable. Um, the processor I feel like I can get away with like the basic processor because I don't do any advanced graphics or any shit like that. Yeah. And and the base processor will be fine for video editing. And yes. Stuff. Uh, so if I wanted a new MacBook with all that stuff, uh, the 14 inch starts at an M an M3 Pro starts at uh. Twenty six hundred dollars. I thought the fourteen started at fifteen. Well, if I wanted a thirty two gig RAM oh. and a terabyte, okay, okay. The I knew that they when I saw fifteen hundred dollars for the fourteen inch, I was like, they're not putting anything in that in that cheap model. I can get an M two an M two Pro for twenty one hundred. How much off is that? That is. It's like 500 less. Is that a lot? To me, it is. Honestly, get one on eBay. There's get, there's yeah. people who are trying to sling their old True. their old MacBooks right now to get the new one. Or I could. They have M, they have M2 Max uh, MacBooks refurbished for twenty for the same price. As the new M2 Pro. I don't know what the M3 benchmark Pro. difference is between the two. Those charts make no fucking sense, <laughs> the ones they show. No, because they try to make them look as impressive yeah. as possible. The, the the bottom line from the event is that if you have an Intel one, this is going to blow your dick off. Uh, yeah. And that's what you have. I, ha I do. I also have no money right now. You better hold on so. to your dick. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to get blown off. <laughs> what are you looking for that your current laptop doesn't do, Will? It's... Uh, 2015 yeah it's just the 2015, it's, 2015 Intel MacBook. it's it's showing its age uh it's so old i didn't bring this up in the last 
podcast, I told them afterwards, somebody commented, what mod is that oh, yeah. that gets the <laughs> Apple logo to light up? It's not a mod. That's that's how they used that's to do it. That's how they were. It's In so old. my day. It's so old, people don't even know that they used to look yeah. like that. <laughs> but the uh, original Spiff said, for one, battery life. Yeah. He, the, he keeps it plugged in. The battery, the battery in this thing uh, is on its way out. So like, the, over there is a 2016 MacBook, yeah. which is still newer than that one. Yeah. That is now uh, like a like a server that I use. Yeah. Um, that one, it had a two-hour battery life. Yeah. This one, 18 hours of actually using it. Yeah. It's insane. Like I, I never think about charging it. If I ever do get like my new MacBook, I am going to like replace the battery in this and then give it to my wife because she doesn't need anything super powerful. Right. So... Yeah. Huh. Anyway, that that's that's your Apple. Uh, that's your Apple Minute. That's your Apple Minute, everybody. Apple, if you're watching, give us computers. Give us computers and phones and phones and a new iPad. I need a new iPad because like I replaced the screen on mine and the touch screen doesn't work so well anymore. I don't need like the fancy one. Just give me like the basic bitch one that you sell to college kids. I'm still rocking my iPad Pro original from like, what 2014. Yeah. <laughs> it's bent. I think I bent it immediately when I got it. I like mm. put it in my backpack and sat on it, and now it's curved. Yeah. Um, the screen has a little red mark on it. Otherwise, fine. Yeah. It's my kitchen uh, device. Yeah. I, I, I really I only use on it to watch YouTube and read comics, but like if I yeah. have to pause, I have to like hit the screen a bunch of times. Oh, the digitizer's all yeah. fucked up. I want them to make a camera so bad. I want I want a dedicated uh, photo or video camera from apple i don't know if i would want that from like it would be a great camera but it mm -hmm. would come with a lot of apple bullshit you yeah know? yeah it would like if I they make <laughs> lenses i'll be mad <laughs> <laughs> if they allow like a canon lens mount that yeah. would be incredible because i just they're really good at the processing yes. uh that makes the picture really nice mm -hmm. uh so imagine what they could do with a full frame sensor yeah. you know that they could do some amazing stuff, but I don't want any. I don't want them to develop glass. I just want them to develop the, yeah. the the computer that takes the picture. The capture button is separate and five thousand dollars. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, let's uh, get moving through yes. some other stuff here. Uh, we got. I guess we'll talk about uh, the Nintendo Smash Tournament rules. Yes. So let me give a little bit of context here. Yes. Uh, when was it Nintendo decided they were going to sl slap a lot of regulations on tournaments? This happened like over a year ago. Yes. Um, they had all these crazy rules and everybody was pissed off about it. And I think rightfully so, mm -hmm. um, because they historically have put on very bad tournaments for smash brothers. Uh, everybody, all of the competitive Smash community pretty much unanimously agreed on a certain set of rules, and Nintendo was like, nah, these yeah. are the rules that you have to play by. And their tournaments were bad because of it. Mm -hmm. um, then they imposed some licensing things, like you're you you can, you're only allowed to have a tournament if you follow our guidelines and get approved by us mm -hmm. and, and whatever. And everybody was like, oh no, that means that uh, all these tournaments that use the rule set that we like aren't going to happen. And and it was a little dire for a little bit, but yeah. now it seems like their the ability to get a license to have a smash tournament is a lot more clear. Now the, the roadmap to actually get obtaining a license is, right. is a lot more clear from Nintendo. Uh, some people are still upset about it because it's nice to, to it's the wild west right or it has right. been the wild west where you just make a smash tournament and you just you just do whatever the fuck yeah. you want uh but now nintendo's like hey we want you to do it the legal way we want yeah. you to, to to obtain a license from us because it's our ip um i liked how it was the wild west but i understand that it can't just be like that forever because if you look at other esports like I always talk about how Call of Duty, it costs a million dollars to make a Call of Duty team. Yeah. You need to give Activision one million dollars to even compete in the tournament. Right. Um, and if you wanted to make a tournament for like Call of Duty or Valorant, it's a fuck ton of money that you have to pay to Riot and and, and Activision. So yeah. 
Um, Nintendo is just like we will just give you a license if you if you apply for it and and, and we approve it. You know, so uh, I don't know if it's better or worse. But anyway, if you want to read part of the article, you can go. Uh, Super Smash Brothers fans are pretty used to getting dirty looks from Nintendo, especially the melee scene. Nintendo has been consistently made uh, setting up melee tournaments more and more difficult. Uh, imposing strict guidelines and rules that many local organizers have had to skirt around in the past few years. Yeah, so that's another thing I should probably bring up. Nintendo hates acknowledging their older games. Yeah. Uh, We haven't heard anything about Melee in forever, and Melee is probably one of the biggest communities for their older games that they haven't, you know, reimagined. So they have been pretty historically against big Melee tournaments. Part of the reason why is because... A lot of melee tournaments use uh, hacked versions of melee, sometimes just for spectating, because it's easier to spectate when the game's hacked a little bit. Uh, sometimes these tournaments work on. Uh, you remember the Pokemon Stadium uh, level where it like transforms? Yeah. Uh, there's a mod that makes it not transform. Right. And a lot of tournaments uh, use that modded version. And Nintendo goes, you can't mod our game if right. you're gonna do that and i think uh ludwig made a video about it uh and he because he runs tournaments too and nintendo said hey you can't do the modded version of right. that level you have to do the regular version and because of that uh some somebody won the tournament because the level changed in a way that yeah. that made him uh win uh, win one of the rounds anyway uh, you this new continue. set of guidelines recently released by Nintendo threatens to wipe out the local Melee community tournaments for good. Released by all major Nintendo Twitter accounts, uh, these new guidelines contain a number of new rules that threaten to completely upend how community tournaments are run. While there are many questionable decisions, the two major issues that Smash Brothers fans are up in arms about are the new strict limits to how many play, uh, people can enter a tournament and how much money a tournament organizer can make. According to these guidelines, only a maximum of 200 people are allowed to compete uh, at in-person tournaments, while that number is increased to 300 for online tournaments. For organizers that wish to hold tournaments that include more than the maximum number, Nintendo now makes them hold several smaller tournaments and then put uh, and then put on a winner's bracket instead. Nintendo has even banned high school charity tournaments unless the school get itself gets permission that's fucked up no that's not a joke (laughs) that's fucked up uh nintendo also appears to be stopping community tournaments from making any kind of profit stressing that organizers are only allowed to make enough money for tournament upkeep and prize pools community tournaments are no longer allowed to generate commercial revenue even going so far as to ban the sale of food beverages and merchandise on the premises Uh, how it plans to actually enforce that rule is beyond the understanding of most normal people uh, if all that wasn't bad enough, Smash Brothers Melee fans have a much more significant reason to panic. Nintendo also states that any tournament that includes a game with online play must go through Nintendo servers, which restricts Smash Brothers Melee tournaments to in-person events since it doesn't have built-in online features. Modified software is also banned, meaning popular mods such as Project M and Project Plus are, are no-goes as well. If you didn't quite get it from all the baffling restrictions and potentially catastrophic rules, the Smash Brothers community is not amused. Fans have been in uproar all over social media at the moment, with some already claiming that it's over and something that the competitive Smash Brothers scene could potentially never recover from if Nintendo doesn't loosen restrictions. Hopefully it doesn't come to that and Nintendo has kicked one hell of a hornet's nest this time around. So I think what's going to end up happening is if people want to run Slippy tournaments, which is the online component of melee mm-hmm. people are going to do that they're going to just do it and nothing's going to everything's going to be the same as it's always been yeah um nintendo has already given out some licenses i i this rolled out in japan first yeah uh and i think some japanese tournaments that have been operating just fine in the past are still operating just under the nintendo license yeah. like nothing ever happened these other rules about not being able to like sell concessions and like not being able to make money like these tournament organizers do a lot of work they need to make a little bit of money it's like it's a full-time fucking job uh that's just insane and ridiculous um 
But I think we're going to find out that getting a license is, is not so bad and that people are going to do it and it's and everything's going to be fine. I'm just picturing like underground fight clubs of like melee players where like they have to go to like some weird dingy basement to play melee instead of those like beat each other up for money. You know, <laughs> I like mean, that's, that's that's what I'm picturing, you know. It's just it, like it's kind of funny in a way because it's Smash Brothers Melee, but at the same time, like <laughs> I understand like the frustration and like the anger. Um, it, it should just be like we want to play this game in a tournament. You don't make the game anymore. You don't support the game anymore. You make no money off this game anymore. Just let us play in peace. And Nintendo comes in and says, "No, eat my ass. Do it this way." Imagine how much money they would make if they just... Because they have to know how big this community is. Just put it on the Switch with an online component. If you're so mad that all of these people are playing the game that they want to play, mm -hmm. give them the tools to play it the way that you want them to play it. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess it's one of those things where like they came out with Ultimate and they just want you to play Ultimate and focus on that. But at the same time, like... If they keep doing this shit, like they must know the size of the melee community and like mm -hmm. the hornet's nest they keep kicking every time they like do something like this. I, I think one problem is if they do make a new melee, like if they do port melee, everyone's gonna find a problem with it. Oh yeah. Cause like in the old melee, like if you're on port three instead of port one in the controller, you have an advantage. They're gonna be like, oh, it's acting like it's on port one. Well, I hate it, this. This is all Wi Fi <laughs> now, it's all over Bluetooth now, it's all the same. Uh yeah, it's a no-win situation because yeah, you're right. If they do port it to Switch or like something like that, it's there's gonna be some fucking problem with it. Yeah, but that, I mean the the reason why there's all these mods and stuff is because Nintendo hasn't fucking done anything yeah. with it. If they if they had some if they saw that there was interest in this old game and kept up with it, maybe it would have gone the way they wanted to. Yeah, but uh, no. So I don't I. I Everyone gets mad at Nintendo for not acknowledging esports and 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 the communities around some of their games. Mm -hmm. uh, now they're acknowledging it, and they're getting a lot of backlash for it. Yeah, some of it rightfully so, mm -hmm. uh, but some of it is just it's just business because other esports have it even worse. Yeah. No. Oh, so. Yeah. Um. What's next? Proof of shower within the past 24 hours? Hey, man, don't tempt them. Linus from Linus Tech Tips said he's gonna host a tournament and break as many rules as he possibly can. Ludwig already did that. But they'll check with a lawyer first, and if it seems likely they'd actually get sued, they then they won't. Yeah, I'd I, I don't, I don't know. Because, yeah. I mean, they've been doing... These tournaments have been going on for years... And some people get cease and desists, but uh, for the most part, they just kind of ignore it. I'm trying to see. I think there is like some restriction on like streaming it and I'm trying to find like where the actual rule set is. It's not on the Nintendo of America Twitter. I mean, you you don't see Valorant tournaments like you see yeah. like the like the like the main Valorant tournaments. Mm -hmm. And then you don't see anything else. Yeah. Aside from like little clubs, like at, at like esports bars, yeah. you don't see like anything outside of majors, really. Oh, you see, oh, it's it's called something, the Valorant, like. <sighs> right. It's like the ML MLB, but it's yeah. for Valorant. Valorant. I forgot what it's yeah. called, the, the VCS or something. What are some of the tournaments that are not permitted by these guidelines? Tournaments that are not permitted by these guidelines include, but are not limited to, tournaments that make it a condition of entry in tournaments or viewing tournaments to subscribe to or follow a YouTube channel, a Twitter account, or any other streaming channel or social media account, or subscribe to a paid membership. Yeah, they don't want you to benefit from the tournament right. in, in a way like that. Right. So if, you know, because I know... LTT has float plane, which is a subscriptions only service. Oh, that would be a a rule break. That would be a rule break. I right think there. that's is that an FCC issue? Like you can't like you can't give away a prize if you have to pay to get the prize. 
Right. Like you can't do a giveaway and be like, give me five dollars and you're entered to win this yeah. Nintendo Switch, you know? Um that's why there's a lot of people on Twitch who will do giveaways to their subscribers. Mm -hmm. That is illegal. Yeah. <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> there has to be a that's why when you see like on uh if they're doing a giveaway for like fucking Doritos, they say no purchase necessary yeah. because it's illegal to make it so you have to buy a even product. though you're technically buying the yeah. Doritos. Yeah, it's like a loophole. Yeah. Otherwise it's it's a raffle. It's it's a it's a gambling. Yeah. Anyway. Uh let's talk about payday three. Yes. Uh payday three developer Starbreeze has apologized for the ongoing wait for the uh heist game's first patch. While major server issues have marred the online titles co op uh the co op blah, have marred the co op titles launch um have been addressed. Fans have been left frustrated by the lack of updates about around Payday 3's first patch. Originally scheduled to arrive in October, uh, it promises over 200 quality of life improvements for all platforms. Despite our silence, we want to assure you all that the team is working on our on our main priority, which is to get the patch we promised out to you and to make sure that our patching process allows us to continue publishing them at a steady cadence in the future, Star Reese said this week. We know it sucks to keep hearing the same thing and continued before confir confirming that an update is currently going through the testing and certification process. The studio said the patch was delayed after it found critical errors uh, with its update with its update pipeline following the game's release, which needed to be urgently addressed to avoid the possibility of a player progression uh, being wiped. We see a lot of your feedback about the progression system it added. Uh, our designers are looking at are looking at how the system can be adapted to balance both the challenge system as well as offering infamy points uh, for each heist and we'll come back with a more information on what this looks like soon. I was excited for Payday 3. Uh, I thought the first one was okay. I mean, did I play the first one? I think we played the first one. It was like one of the first Let's Plays I on the like channel. I, I thought that was the second one. When did the second one come out? The second that would have that would have been 2013. Yeah, 2013. Oh, okay. Then it was the second. Then I guess yeah. I never played the first one. Yeah, I played the first one. Uh, it was fine when we played it, and then uh, I played it on the Switch when it came out, and that was not great. Yeah, uh, I like the idea of like a heist type of game. Yeah, so I was interested. Um, but um. I was excited for the third one. Maybe it would be a little different, but I was looking at footage and stuff and it looks the same and it looks buggy and it looks yeah. stupid. So I, it, I, it, I kind of lost interest pretty quick. Mm -hmm. So what, what did it, what was the rating that it got? Uh, the Metacritic score? Yeah. Uh, 60s. 67 on PC, 60 on PS5, 65 on Xbox. Yikes. Yeah. Yikers. 31 user score. Oh, no, I'm sorry. 3.1 user score. Mm. That is yeah. terrible. Apparently, play, uh, Payday 2, uh, the playtime on Steam has increased since Payday 3 came out and hasn't been fixed. Say that again? The playtime is it? The, you know how Steam it says like the amount of like people are playing? Yeah. And like the playtime, that has gone up for Payday 2 since uh, Payday 3 came out. Uh, people are would rather play the old yes. ones. That's weird. That's unfortunate. Yeah. That's, you know... I think that's what Nintendo's afraid of. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, okay. Next, uh, let's talk about Xbox. Yes. The Xbox Partner Preview, uh, which is different from their developer thing they did earlier in the year, mm -hmm. apparently. They're still trying to figure it out. <laughs> uh, you didn't watch this, right? No, I wasn't interested at all. It was very weird the way it was set up. Because like they would show the trailer, mm -hmm. then it would show a bumper... Of like the game, you know, just like a uh, key art of the game. And it said like the game title. And then it would say to learn more, scan this QR code and it'll take you to an article on Xbox Wire about that game. God. Like, why didn't I would rather them just have a developer come up and say like, hey, this is our game. This is what you could do in it. Pre-order today. I liked the one that had Hi-Fi Rush. Yeah, the developer one. Yeah. When it had the, the developers talking about it. Yeah. yeah, that was cool, but they just didn't have a lot of great announcements in that, right. in that one. 
Um, no, th I, that's not good because like you scan the QR code that takes you away from the live stream. Yeah, no, that's yeah. that's a horrible setup. Yeah, so. that, Microsoft has a lot to figure out. The only with, good with thing they did with like with this setup was in the middle of it, they did a quick recap of what they had what they had shown off, okay. which I thought was nice. So. The first one in this article is uh, Metal Gear Solid Delta. Snake Eater. Yeah. It's uh, yeah, it's just uh, in-game footage. It's pre-alpha, but this is essentially what the game is going to look like. This is the most exciting thing that I think would have come out of this. Um, it's, it's definitely one of the most. I Something is not working for me with this. There, it, There's just... It's like the soul was sucked out of it. Have you been seeing those people who complain about the art direction of this compared to the original? I saw people talking about the yellow haze. Yeah. Like like the original has a yellow haze. Yeah. Um I don't I mean I get that. Yeah. But uh that's not all. Like like there's no, I get, something like, else. I feel like I feel like things like the yellow haze and like the art direction of the PS2 version it looks like that because it was a PS2 game and Kojima was working within the limitations of the PS2. Well, I don't know about the yellow. That's a color correction that he purposely put on that. Yeah, I guess. That that the fact that there's a haze could yeah. be limitations well, of the PlayStation 2, but the fact that it's yellow, that's intentional. What I'm getting at is in in 2024 whenever this game comes out, it's definitely going to veer more towards a realistic look more so than, you know, the realistic but also kind of stylized version of the ps2 version yeah but at the same time yeah it does kind of there's like a genericness to this yes. version of the game that that, I, that's what i'm saying there's something that I, it's unreal engine 5 uh, maybe that's it because like the original game was like a proprietary engine yeah and, and this I, looks like every other game is using the same engine as every other game i'm trying to like when i heard about this in my brain i was thinking about it like uh metal gear solid 5 but it's snake eater yeah. you know and this doesn't even look like that yeah. like snake kind of looks like a punished snake yeah but not really there's just there's just something like kojima when he makes a game there's some weird wacky bullshit and everything is intentional and yeah. this just seems like Look at the environments. Right. Look at how pretty everything is. And like that's not very Metal Gear. Yeah. Like there's some pretty environments in Metal Gear, but it's not. It's look at how cool and yeah. the Snake is. He's cool. And look like, how action packed the game is. Look at the boobs that we have in the game. <laughs> and like what he can do with an engine, like Death Stranding uses the same engine as Horizon Zero Dawn, mm -hmm. but those two games look nothing alike. You know, Death Stranding looks more like a Metal Gear game. Yeah. Than this does, yeah, to a certain extent. No, I agree. I think this maybe, looks too clean. I think maybe like we're being a little unfair because this is pre-alpha and this is more of like proof of concept. And maybe the more we see of the game, like if we see actual in-game gameplay, mm -hmm. like that could make a difference. Like sound effects are a big part of Metal Gear series. Uh, how Snake moves is a big part of it. Do you know is the CQC going to be done properly? You know, the voice acting, you know, all that stuff comes together to make Metal Gear Metal Gear. But, you know, we don't I, like we don't really see that from just Snake walking around uh, a, a jungle. Right. I, I've pulled up the gameplay trailer for a Metal Gear Solid 5. Uh, it's hard to yeah, it's hard to nail down exactly what's different, because honestly, Metal Gear Solid 5 does look kind of the same as, yeah. as, as the Metal Gear Delta. It looks pretty similar. It's definitely one of those things where like you you don't you know something's off but you can't tell what it is. I think it's just a lot of small details yeah. that seem very generic in the Delta version versus mm -hmm. this. And you're right, it's pre alpha, so who knows what it's gonna end up yeah. looking like. But then just don't show it. I think they wanted to show something. Mm -hmm. I think they just wanted to show like the direction they're going with the world but i don't know if it was the right call yeah i don't i don't i don't know yeah i mean even this might have a sort of color correction i mean there's definitely anamorphic flares yeah which is like he's 
he was trying to make this a movie. Yeah. Well, he's been trying to make everything a movie. Yeah, but Metal Gear Delta just looks like a this, video this game. is what the video game looks like in Unreal yeah. Engine 5. Um, maybe they'll stylize it later, but I, mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, Alan Wake 2 is out. Yes. It, uh, People it's, like it. It's getting really good reviews. I'm kind of upset I'm not playing it right now. I do want to play it. I started a Spider-Man. Oh, yeah. I started Spider-Man. What it's pretty you, good. What do you think so far? It's pretty good. Yeah. I did not like the beginning. Oh, with uh, Sandman? With the Sandman, uh, with the Peter and Miles talking to each other, like, all campy. But that's how Spider-Men talk. <laughs> it's just... It was just, it was too, too much. much. It was too much. I, I do, I know a lot of people are saying like, oh, that was the best opening in video game history. And I, I, what? I disagree That's, completely. Who's saying that? A lot of people. Like you go on, like, I'm not even kidding. Like people were so impressed that like, this could have been in the final boss and it's the first boss and whatnot. What? Like it's impressive. Yes. But like, honestly, the, the intro to the first Spider-Man on on ps4 was like so much more effective and so much more interesting to me i forget what happened in the intro in the first one i played it i forgot well first like it opens up like he's just waking up he hears the police blotter so like he's getting ready and it's got that really awesome song by the warbly jets playing in the background yes that was cool you swing out like when the chorus hits and you're swinging to that song and like it sets you into the the mindset like this is it's going to capture the the fun and the joy of Spider-Man, how very fleeting that is to me. Yeah. You know, have fun as Spider-Man. And then it gets into like the business of it where like you have to take out the Kingpin and it doesn't just throw you right at the Kingpin. You actually have to work your way up to yes. it. And the confrontation with Pink Kingpin actually feels more epic because you like earned it rather than just flying to Sandman and dealing with all his Sandman buddies. Yes, I I did like that intro yeah, a lot. That was uh, a, yeah. This one I did I did not like. Yeah. I didn't like it. It was just a see. It was a series of quick time events. Yeah. Sometimes they didn't tell you what button to hit. No. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but once the game opened up, I was like, this is cool. They immediately let you unlock a costume, and I was like, all right, I want to unlock all the costumes yeah. now. So like that was. Cool. I had to actually like stop unlocking costumes because like I needed the other points for like my skill tree and stuff. Oh, okay. But, after a while, yeah, but like you do get some pretty good costumes. I will say, I once it opened up, I f- I realized I was in Williamsburg, and I was like, oh, let's find my old apartment. <laughs> and I went, and they removed the block that my apartment was on. Oh. They had the one before it and the one yeah. after, but the one that the block was on, and they removed it. And the surrounding area was nothing like it is in real life. It was yeah. just generic copy and pasted buildings, which is a little upsetting, but. Yeah. The reason I knew I was even in Brooklyn was because of all of the big buildings. I, yeah. I knew what those were. So they got the big buildings, right? Right. The, the important ones. So no one's going to be like, oh, Bob's apartment isn't here anymore. Yeah. So it's it's cool, and I'm interested to play the rest of it. Yeah. It was just really cheesy. Yeah. Also, with, with the friggin' Craven, like... Get get me get me one that's an equal. And then a guy comes up with an iPad. Yeah. And he's like, what about... <laughs> a new hunt and he's like oh yeah let's go to new york city baby like it's a 90s uh, uh movie well i mean yeah <laughs> the the concept makes sense you know craven needs a new like new challenge yeah. so he goes to new york where all the super villains are and also the spider men um but, but like that seems like that should be like a much bigger decision not just what about yeah. this and he's like yeah yeah let's go there yeah <laughs> Anyway, we're here to talk about Xbox. Yeah, we? Alan Wake 2 uh, looks really good. I really do want to play it. I've heard it's... I'm surprised by like the good reviews. Like I knew it was going to be a good uh, good reviewed game, but like people are really hyping this game up. Like Just what it yeah. does is like, expectation and the meta narrative and all that stuff. The I'm, first game was very trippy. And this looks like it goes all in on that. I'm a little mad that it's uh, on Epic Games. It's on the Epic Games mm-hmm. launcher. So it's not yeah. going to be a Steam Deck thing. I'm going to have to while. use yeah. yeah, I'm going to have to use uh my ally or something. Yeah. Uh but yeah, I'll have to wait till I get a little further in Spider-Man before yeah. I jump into that. Uh Ark Survival of Survival Ascended. This is the next gen remake of Ark Survival Evolved. This apparently had a lot of problems but then they showed off like actual gameplay footage here. So it works. Yes. Uh, 
it has cross-platform modding, high detail, realistic looking environments, and dinosaurs in Unreal Engine 5. <laughs> okay. And this is not to be confused with Arc 2, which is a direct sequel that stars Vin Diesel. Still don't know where that game right. is. Yeah. Oh, wait, that's not out. No. Okay. Uh, next is uh, Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, uh, a.k.a. Like a Dragon Animal Crossing. <laughs> okay, what? Uh, so it's the next Like a Dragon game, and they've added um, Dondoku Island, which is literally just Animal Crossing. They put Animal Crossing in uh, a Yakuza game. So you just... Happy Resort Don Dondoku Island. So you just go to islands and you get little monster well, guys? You go, you go to one island and you can like build a house, like build a community. Oh, he's yeah. he, with a baseball bat, he is mining yes oh my god it literally is animal crossing yeah in a yakuza game <laughs> that's, that's fucking ridiculous <laughs> i i feel like i should like play a yakuza game yeah just because like i i don't want to say they're like japan's answer to grand theft auto but like they have such like a weird evolution mm-hmm. like the first few games like try to be serious games but then there's all like you know the the wackiness to it and then with this the last few yakuza games like when they finally started calling them like a dragon and this new character i think it's i think this is kazuma kiyu he's just a complete lunatic (laughs) and like it comes across in the games Mm -hmm. so no i'm interested for the wackiness yeah oh no this is um ichiban uh kazuka kazuma kiyu was the original protagonist it's just you know where do you start I know. If you want to play Yakuza, is this because I know that there's like offshoots? Is this the is this an okay place to jump in, or do you yeah. want to play one of the main titles? Is this? A, I thought this was a main title. I don't know. I I don't know. I know Yakuza like a dragon. They just rubbed that guy's belly. Hold on, go back. <laughs> Literally rubbed his belly. Yeah. And is that Hulk Hogan? Uh on the left that looks like Hulk Hogan. It might be. <laughs> okay, so yeah, Yakuza Like a Dragon was the la- it was like the last mainline release game. Okay. I believe that's like ya- that's 7 and then yeah, Infinite Wealth is 8. So this is the eighth mainline Yakuza game oh. or Like a Dragon. Now they're called Like a Dragon because that's what it's called in Japan. The developers say you can buy the one next month, Infinite Wealth in January and you're good. So what's next month? Uh oh, isn't that one of that's in that uh Gaiden? Oh, that one looks cool too. Yes. It's on Game Pass? Oh. Well, the old ones are on Game Pass. Oh, okay. Yeah. It'll be on Game Pass. No, Gaiden, I think, will be on Game Pass. Okay, there you go. Or will this be on Game Pass? I don't know. One of them will be on Game Pass. Next is uh Still Wakes the Deep. The Chinese room makers of Amnesia, a machine for pigs, and Dear Esther reveal a new gameplay footage for their upcoming narrative horror game. Uh, f- oh, this is the one where um, you're on an oil rig. Out of scene, you're just walking around an oil rig. Okay. I mean, it looks spooky. Spook- hey. hey. That's the theme of this episode. Spooky. Manor Lords. Uh, f- PC Game Pass release date. Manor Lords. Um be coming to windows pc and game pass on april 26th next year looks like strategy not yep. interested ikaro will not die oh i saw this yes this looks good uh future lab and thunderful showed off their latest upcoming game lightning paced action adventure with roguelike elements uh set in a futuristic neon facility these are the guys who made power wash simulator yes and then they're like what if we make like an actual game yeah, so uh, I'm very confused. Yeah. I'm interested to see how this will uh, play out. Yeah. I'm not that interested by this trailer, but uh, I, I like to see where it goes. Yeah. Uh, next is Spirit of the North 2, the sequel to Spirit of the North. That's all. I don't remember what Spirit of the North was. He plays a fox? Yeah. This one has a new fox and a, a flying companion that will uh, be tagging along on the adventure. Okay. I don't know what this is. Yeah. Cool. Uh, next, uh, we got gameplay footage from RoboCop Rogue City. I heard this is good. 
can we just pause and take a moment to reflect on how there is a robo a robocop game in the year of our lord 2023 yes that people are fucking pumped for i heard it's and good that it's getting like decent to good reviews yeah like can we just think about that for a minute i would like to try it i like really want to play this game and like see how good it is like that's ins- that's insane to me i want to like, see some gameplay get some gameplay in here they don't, they don't have it in this trailer. trailer has gameplay oh wait it does a oh, little yeah. bit <laughs> this gameplay is just nuts because like he can't <laughs> he can't run it's literally do- oh he can't run he can't run <laughs> It's literally Doom, but you're RoboCop and slow. Yeah. And he's got like a really high health meter because like regular bullets just chip away at him. Oh my god. It's it's ridiculous. Yeah, I wanna I wanna try this game out. Apparently there's also like there's like an adventure mode where like you have to actually make moral choices and like do dialogue trees and stuff. But it's Robocop. <laughs> so it's like okay to be a giant asshole. Yeah. Um Dungeons of Hinterberg. Uh, the team behind Dungeons of Hinterberg showed off some new gameplay that gave an example of what daily life is like for Louisa, uh, what challenges she might face on her adventure, and who she might meet. Uh, I think I tuned out at this one because I was busy making dinner and I, there was a fiasco on the stove. <laughs> so <laughs> okay, I might have skipped that one. No, it's pretty. No, what it was, uh, mom called because she needed her Brit Box login. Oh. During this. And you have it? No. <laughs> <laughs> but I have her acorn login, which is the same login. Oh, no. Anyway, uh, the, finals. the finals. I didn't know this was in this. Uh, I want to play this. This looks really cool. This looks like yes. uh, a better Warzone, like Call of Duty Warzone. Yes, this does look... Uh, this looks like one of those, you know free-to-play shooters that i don't like but i would actually play because there's like style and flair to it yeah uh i don't like current war zone so this looks like uh yeah. i might actually in- enjoy this oh wait no this is the one where like they use uh f- ai voice actors they do yeah oh so i'm not allowed to like it i mean <laughs> you shouldn't I'll because... do- what if i mute the voice acting <laughs> what if i do that I think this is a Korean studio. No, I'm sorry. I think it's a Korean publisher, and the studio is Norwegian or something. Okay. Um, I don't know. It looks really cool though. Uses AI voice acting for lines shouted mid-match by in-game announcers, and has which has drawn heat. Uh, f- apparently, the finals uses a mix of human acted voice work and AI generated text to speech. So, like, what does that mean? Is it like if my name in the game is Big Butt eighty seven? Like, is it gonna read that out? Maybe. Which I think is fine. That's yeah. like Microsoft f- fucking you know uh, computers do that all the time. Or is it like they used AI instead of getting an actual guy to read certain lines? I mean, all they said was it was a mix of like AI yeah. voice acting and human voice acting. Yeah, like they didn't clarify. I wonder if I'll be able to tell when I play it. We'll find out. A closed beta kicks off. Uh, has already kicked off. Open so you- beta. That uh, it is in, it is currently an open beta. This article says um, the closed beta kicks off for Xbox on October twenty sixth. This YouTube video says the finals open beta kicks off on Xbox October twenty sixth. Well, okay. And I downloaded it on Steam. Okay. I don't know if there's any benefit to playing it on uh, Game Pass or anything. Yeah. But uh, I, I have it on Steam. So I'm going to probably play it on there. Mm-hmm. Some games don't like it when you play on different platforms. Uh, um, I figure Steam is better all around for, yeah. for something like that. Anyway, uh, that's it for the Xbox Showcase. Uh, I think that was kind of not a lot of great stuff. It was It was a mid- showcase even that the say. finals game like that's on everything yeah. there's no reason to for that that doesn't bring anything yeah i mean and robocop and like alan wake are coming out within like a few days mm-hmm. so like there's not really much for them to showcase nothing really exciting beyond that we knew they were coming out people were already excited for them yeah the metal gear stuff was interesting you know regardless of how you feel about it because that was a big reveal um but yeah other than that yeah, I was very excited about the Metal Gear stuff because yeah. that was new stuff we haven't seen before. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, uh, I'm i not impressed yeah. <laughs> by the Metal Gear stuff. 
Um, let's plow through the rest. But, you know, I'm going to move this one up. Uh, let's do the... Let's skip to Xbox restricts accessories because uh, people in the chat were asking about it. Yes. Uh, should I just read the what you need to know? Let's yes. Summarize. Okay, what you need to know. From November 12th, 2023, Microsoft will no longer allow unauthorized third-party accessories to be used with its Xbox consoles. Players are reporting a warning message displaying on Xbox when plugged in, uh, when plugging in unauthorized accessories, notifying them of a of the date their accessories will be blocked with error 0x82d60002. Xbox advertise Xbox advises returning the accessory and instead referring to its list of its list of authorized products on its website. The message uh, is shown due to the latest. The message is shown due to the latest console build, which is said to be causing console issues when using uh, these third-party accessories. Update. Uh, we've heard from sources familiar with Microsoft's plan that this may be related to Microsoft's expanding its program for approved third-party wireless uh, Xbox controllers. Uh, most Xbox third-party controllers right now are wired. And update. Again, Microsoft has responded to our questions for clarification around this new policy. Microsoft has said... Microsoft and our licensed Xbox hardware partner accessories are designed and manufactured with quality standards for performance, security, and safety. Unauthorized accessories can compromise the gaming experience for Xbox consoles, uh, and players may receive a pop-up warning that their accessory is unauthorized. Eventually, the, the unauthorized accessory will be blocked from use uh, to preserve the console gaming experience. For a full list of accessories that are supported on the Xbox console, please visit xbox.com accessories. I'm doing that right now. I want to know if the 8-bit do arcade stick. I mean, it has to That count. has to be. That actually has like the logo on it. Yeah. So uh, I've been thinking about this because Xbox controllers are pretty universal. Yes. Um, and it's often confused with the X input protocol, mm -hmm. uh, which is also pretty universal. But X input controllers do not work on an Xbox console. It's right. very confusing. Uh, so I was thinking about how much this sucks and how dire this is. But it looks like uh, I've been fucking around with uh, the GP2040 firmware, which is for the Raspberry Pi Pico. Uh -huh. And a lot of fight sticks and fighting game controllers use mm -hmm. this uh, 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 uh uh, firmware and 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 this 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 brain, uh, this never supported Xbox. It looks like it only supported X input, Nintendo Switch, PS4, PS3, and keyboard. Interesting. So this doesn't affect that, really. Yeah, uh, the eight bit do controllers are still supported. I went to Xbox.com/slash accessories, and this just has like it's this it's the shop. Yeah, it's the <laughs> shop. I mean, I guess it makes sense if if Xbox is selling it, that means it's authorized. Yeah, okay. It, where is the 8-bit do thing? Did you just autofill? Yeah, you have to search for it because it's not clearly... Oh, there yeah. are 8-bit do controllers yeah. on here. Yep, 8-bit do fight they stick. They have 8-bit do... They $120? Have for the fight stick? Yeah, the other one's 90 The Nintendo Switch one's 90 You're paying for that Microsoft license. Let me see if it, that's what it is on Amazon. Yeah, uh, PDP controllers, uh, Control Freak, Game Sir, Power A... The Hyperkin controllers. Yeah, it's hundred and twenty dollars on Amazon. Wow. It's it you can get it in all black though. It's pretty cool. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, so the official stuff, yeah, obviously that's gonna work. Uh it, there haven't the, been any official uh controllers that are wireless. Yeah, that's the big thing. Yeah. Yeah. So so that article said that it might be because um Microsoft wants to start opening up. Yeah. Yeah. Which I guess makes sense. Like more and more things are going wireless. Yeah. And it does kind of suck that, you know, third parties, the solution is to go wired because that's not convenient for a lot of people's setups anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it does suck for like a lot of like the, the more independent companies uh, who do specialty controllers and specialty like adapters. Yeah. So uh, Brook Gaming does yeah. uh, a lot of fight stick brains. They're very expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, that shit might not work anymore. Uh, so if you paid a lot of money to get a fight stick, it might just straight up not work on Xbox yeah. anymore. Um, I don't know a lot of people who are playing fighting games on Xbox, though. I guess Killer Instinct. Yeah. If you're a professional Killer Instinct <laughs> player, you're kind of screwed right now. Um, 
may flash adapters or like the those adapters that let you use other controllers uh those things probably aren't going to work a Badoo has one that thing's probably not going to work anymore um other types of custom controllers uh damn it steve in the chat says gp2040 uh had a xbox 360 compatibility and i'm pretty sure you could plug an xbox 360 controller into an xbox series can't you an xbox 360 controller yeah no no you can't do that no. okay never mind will this affect game pass on pc probably not no no i don't think so no it just affects the console itself, the Xbox console specifically. Basically, anything licensed for Xbox One and Series X still works, but locals and major tournament scene uses PS4 and PS5 due to Xbox One having a weak fighting game lineup. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like like uh, Street Fighter. Street and Fighter stuff Five like that. was not on Xbox at all. Yeah, so a lot of those types of games yeah. use PlayStation. Yeah. One good thing would be Cronus, the aim assist cheat thing. Yeah, I, I tweeted about this, and a lot of people were talking about uh, the Cronus and uh, one other thing. Basically, things that, that like cheat devices, uh, they would be disabled, which is uh -huh. good. That's good. But it's really cool to be able to make your own controller and plug yeah. it in and have it work. And uh, disabling that functionality is bad. This is a massive L for Microsoft. Yes. Usually Microsoft is pretty good at allowing people to play the game however they want to play it. This is a case where they are doing the opposite. Yes. And I don't like it at all. Yeah. Unless they make like this new partner program really easy to sign up for, then mm -hmm. this is a this is a big L in their bracket. Yeah. I mean, how would you like I'm thinking about it in the case of like fight sticks, like they use uh, open source firmware and stuff. So like, right. how would you get a license for an open source firmware? You're not going to be able to. They would probably have to like make a specific Xbox version of the controller then, which sucks because a lot of fighting game players want one stick that they can use across. Yeah. Well, that's what that's I'm saying. Like if I wanted to make a fight stick, yeah. you know, I, I, I would have to, Hey, I made a fight stick. Can I get a license? You know, that's yeah. not, that's not going to work. Um, Anyway, uh, we'll plow through the rest of this. We got Microsoft reorganizes Xbox. Mar Microsoft is reorganizing its Xbox gaming and marketing leadership less than two weeks after acquiring Activision Blizzard. Uh, Microsoft is promoting Matt Booty, still funny, to president of game content and studios, including uh, the new responsibility of ZeniMax and Sarah Bond to Xbox president, overseeing all Xbox platform and hardware work. On the marketing side, Chief Marketing Officer Chris uh, Couple. A capo Celia is stepping down after 32 years at Microsoft. X, uh, the Xbox changes mean Matt Booty, still funny, will now <laughs> lead an expanded organization inside Microsoft Gaming that now includes ZeniMax and Bethesda. Um, Booty's expanded role uh, should help Microsoft Gaming avoid scenarios like Redfall in the future, which means Microsoft clearly uh, focusing on better collaboration between the teams it acquired with ZeniMax and the Bethesda acquisition. Uh, Sarah Bonds will now take over the hardware and software platforms of Xbox to manage the platform of today and build the platform of tomorrow. We are bringing together the teams that will make this possible, explains Phil Spencer. Uh, Sarah Bond will lead this team as the president of Xbox, bringing together devices, player and creator experiences, uh, platform engineering, strategy, business planning, data analytics and business development. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. They're trying to make Xbox better. <laughs> So they're moving people around who, quite frankly, you know, are, are good at their job and deserve to be leading the ship. Phil? While, while Phil is off doing, I don't even know what, <laughs> it, like his position used to be head of Xbox, but according to this workflow chart, it's CEO Microsoft Gaming. Yeah. Like, why isn't that head of Xbox? <laughs> He's the head, though. He's the head of He's the, the gaming area of Microsoft. So what What else could that be? That's Xbox. I guess that also means PC. Yeah. Uh, but like... But like that, that's all Xbox gaming, now. Gaming at Microsoft was all called Xbox, I think. Yeah. Um. Yeah, he's the head of that. Anyway, yeah. uh, it also looks like Bobby Kotick, Chief Executive Officer, Activision Blizzard. He's on here. He's on the For list. For now. <laughs> I'm also noticing the horrible kerning in everybody's names. Horrible what? Kerning, like the space between the oh, letters. Yeah. Look at Tim Stewart, bottom right. Yeah. That looks terrible. 
Anyway, uh, Robert Pattinson added to Arkham Knight. This is fucking awesome. Uh, it was added, but then he was removed. What, really? <laughs> yeah. I was actually excited about I this. I know. Uh, the new skin lets players use the suit from uh, The Batman, the 2022 movie starring Robert Pattinson as Batman. As spotted by Twitter user Andrew4586, the new skin had quietly been added to the game, apparently without any sort of announcement yet. The suit was simply called The Batman 2022. This, this, I, I pulled up a video that was like an overview, yeah. and it looks a lot worse, but the screenshots look awesome. Yeah. Uh, however, oh, sorry. Where was the... Uh... Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah. It looks so good. However, players are now reporting that the skin has been removed as quickly and quietly as it was added. It's not clear if the skin is perhaps set to be added to the game, be that on Epic Game Store or all formats, at, and has not been added, and it has been added too early. Um, the theory online is that this was supposed to launch with the Switch version of the game uh... across all platforms. The Switch version has now been delayed two months till December. Mm. So we're not going to see this for a while. If we see it at all. Oh, just put it out. It's I too know. Late. Everybody you already knows. Did it. This is cool. Yes. It, this almost made me want to boot it back up. I know. I know like you especially, but like a lot of people give Arkham Knight, not unjustifiable crap, mm -hmm. but like, look at this game. This this looks this looks awesome. This looks like an X, like an Xbox Series or a PS5 game. I thought, and this came out in 2015. I was thinking a lot about Arkham while I was playing Spider Man. Yeah, and I was like, kind of wish this was Batman. <laughs> <laughs> like you know, I know this I know this game got a lot wrong, but like it got a lot right. You know what I like about the Arkham games? I think is that uh, it has the you know the the act react combat yeah. style that like every game has now mm -hmm. but also stealth yes and uh that makes it so you can approach situations a whole litany of different yeah. ways and and in spider-man you kind of just swing in smash the ground and beat everybody up <laughs> yeah like the stealth missions in spider-man like they try but, it's, like, it's the mary G you're locked to mary jane no, for no, the, no. Stealth. The, the ones where you play as spider-man oh, i haven't done any of that they had them in the first game where you just you just hang up top and like you try to like web people up. Oh, okay. Without being detected. Well, that's kind of what, what yeah, Batman does. Yeah, but like does. the Batman ones, like it made more sense. Yeah. Like it felt more practical to do that as Batman. Where otherwise, like you're Spider Man, you have superpowers. Yeah. You just go in and like beat everybody. Yeah, up. you can literally lift up a truck. Yeah. So and like Miles Morales has like invinci invisibility, so you can literally just turn invisible. Mm -hmm and do it but like it, it made more sense and like it fit the character of batman because you're like actively stalking them but also like so. you could do it either way like you could just run in and beat the shit out of people yeah or you can stealth around yeah. and i like when i'm given that option because then yeah. i'm playing two different types of games in one game yeah so uh hope suicide squad is good otherwise <laughs> i'm gonna lose faith oh the us. game the, yeah. uh, i think there's no shot yeah uh twice app leaving nintendo that's oh. what that's what you wrote oh it should have said twitch uh yeah the nintendo switch will soon be losing twitch uh the gaming the streaming giant announced today that the, the twitch app will no longer be available to download on the platform starting Why? november 6th existing users will lose access to the app january 31st 2024 uh, in a statement to IGN, Twitch said, we recently made the difficult decision to remove Twitch from the Nintendo Switch. Uh, Nintendo remains a valued partner and we appreciate all the support the Switch community has provided to Twitch and their stream and our streamers. Uh, first launched back in 2021, at the time we said it was uh, performed pretty admirably, though it could, uh, be, it could only be used to watch streams on Twitch and not stream directly from the Switch itself. It also lacks support for reviewing streamers chat in the app. The delisting comes amid rumors of a potential Switch 2 next year. Twitch did not elaborate further on its decision to delist the app from the, the Nintendo Switch. So, yeah, I, what would this have to do with a Switch 2? I guess, like, people might think, oh, if they're delisting it, that means they're getting ready for the Switch 2. Why? Like, well, no, that doesn't make any... That, every that, little thing that happens, everyone's like, ooh, must be because of the Switch exactly. 2. If they're having a unified account system, what the fuck would the difference be? Exactly. You know, just port it over. No, yeah. I think this is just that, like, they realize, like, people aren't watching Twitch streams on the Switch. Yeah, that's true, because they have to, you know, support it and release updates and stuff. Yeah. So, they, they probably... Twitch doesn't fucking do anything. They don't yeah. try to make their product any better 
yeah. ever. They're still we're still locked to the same resolution and bitrate that we've been locked at since I joined Twitch in what twenty twenty thirteen maybe like a lo- like yeah, yeah like a fucking long time ago yeah so I guess it makes and honestly it makes sense in the long run you know this the Nintendo never really pushed the Switch to be like a media tablet yeah there's YouTube on it there's Hulu on it but like that's it and it's cool that there's stuff like that it's yeah. cool that youtube's on it but like netflix isn't on it max isn't on it disney plus isn't on it like all the other big name streaming services are not on it. remember the wii was like the main way to watch netflix for a lot of people yeah, yeah. all right uh last thing bungie fired a bunch of people yes uh f- or or bungie has is it a- playstation's fault no it's bungie's fault okay uh Bungie has reportedly laid off an unknown number of staffers and, delay- and delayed two highly anticipated games. Bloomberg's Jason Schreier reports that the studio's CEO, Pete Parsons, warned staffers that they would hear some news today while announcing a team meeting later on Monday to discuss today's events. Uh, meanwhile, the studio has reportedly delayed the Destiny 2 expansion, The Final Shape, and the studio's next game, Marathon. Sony completed its deal last year to buy Bungie for $3.6 billion. According to Bloomberg, Bungie delayed Destiny 2 The Final Shape to June from its original target of February 27, 2024. While not necessarily the end of Destiny 2, the expansion will serve as a resolution, wrapping up its main story's loose ends. In addition, the studio had pushed back the release date for the extraction shooter Marathon to 2025. Uh, that title of rebooting of an IP from the 90s uh, Mac cult classic uh, is Bungie's attempt to reestablish itself as a force in the modern gaming industry beyond Destiny. Sony has joined the much Sony has joined much of the gaming industry and the tech world at large in laying off staff this year. Naughty Dog, Media Molecule, and PlayStation's visual arts supports team have all faced cuts recently. In addition, Epic Games announced 900 staff members. Uh, losing their jobs in September. CD Projekt Red announced in July it would lay off 100 people. Niantic, Telltale, EA, and Unity have also let go workers in 2023. I'm. What happened? They they uh, they're delaying all their games. They're firing people. Are they are they struggling over there? Uh, Bungie Game Unit cut eight percent of its staff after Destiny play wilted. I don't understand. Like, uh, I, I think people were like leaving Destiny. Like, people weren't playing Destiny, and therefore yeah. people weren't buying Destiny like microtransactions. So, like, Bungie was losing money. Yes. And they figured their way to fix it was to lay a bunch of people off. Yeah. Bungie CEO claims layoffs were due to Destiny 2 underperforming. Yeah. In an internal town hall meeting. They kind of. <sighs> It's rough because Bungie had a roadmap for Destiny Mm -hmm. that got all fucked because of Activision, but then they went on their own and then they, and then they fucked it up more. Yeah. (laughs) So, uh, and then they got bought by PlayStation. I don't know what PlayStation's hand hand is in all of this. This is, um, this is from an IGN article. IGN has confirmed reports that Bungie took responsibility for the layoffs rather than laying them at the feet of parent company Sony. Okay. Pete Parsons told employees that the layoffs were largely due to underperformance from Destiny 2 over the last year, as well as lower than expected pre-orders for the upcoming expansion, The Final Shape. Um, employees were also told that Destiny 2 player sentiment was at an all-time low. Sources said that this issue has been flagged to leadership repeatedly for months prior to the layoffs, with employees begging for necessary changes to win players back. One former Bungie employee recalled that they were repeatedly assured following the 2022 Sony acquisition of Bungie that there would be no layoffs and cited an item from Sony's quarterly report that claimed $1.2 billion of the $4 billion acquisition was largely expected which was going explicitly towards staff retention. Multiple employees confirmed that money was distributed to employees who were fully vested with money split into multiple payments over time and varying based on discipline and seniority. Other employees also told IGN that they felt especially frustrated with the layoffs given that the company had completed work on brand new headquarters, more than double the size of its previous office and likely a pricey upgrade in Bellevue, Washington. Yeah, I'm hearing this a lot from big corporations these days what uh 
they're expanding and firing everybody. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's, it's like insane. Mm -hmm. We uh saw a lot of crazy profits during COVID. Yeah. Everybody was locked in spending all of their money because they wanted to entertain themselves. Uh and then all of the, just, I mean corporations see all of this profit and they think they need to make more and more money as the yeah. years go on but then everybody lost all of their money because of covid yeah and then had no money to spend and then stopped engaging with content because they had to go back to their jobs and stuff yeah. and uh it was just an unrealistic uh expectation to expect the following year to do better than 2020 when covid was right. going nuts um and then all of these corporations that used to do everything by the numbers mm -hmm. uh, kept doing it by the numbers. And then they had to fucking fire everybody yeah, because they couldn't meet the expectations that they thought that they could. I remember I saw somewhere uh, someone I forgot what website it was, but they were arguing that 2023 might join like the annals of like best year in gaming because of all the great games that came yeah, out. Yeah, there's a lot year. of really good stuff. And like in like in a vacuum yes this is this is honestly a contender year like up there with like 2004 1998 like all those like banner year of games but at the same time can you really call it that when so many companies are laying off this amount of people yeah it's like, it's, it's insane because yeah. all these companies are making are doing record-breaking numbers and firing off their yeah. employees it doesn't fucking make any sense yeah it's it's def it's def this is definitely something that could have been avoided. Yeah. But it just seems like no actions were taken to make it preventable. Uh Sidilac says also Bungie Upper Management spent a lot of money in their new building where where everyone works remote. Yeah. You mean spending all this money and then also everybody's working remote? Yeah. Like there's no reason to spend money in this yeah. new building. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of companies who are selling off real estate because they don't need it yeah they need smaller places because they're on they're on like a like a hybrid you know yeah work situation which i think is what makes the most sense yeah yeah it's it's uh very weird and it's only gonna get weirder it's yes. only gonna get shittier life's a toilet yeah anyway speaking uh of toilets speaking of toilets here Not a very good week. Uh, <laughs> so we got Xbox here who says, pondering our Zorb. <laughs> that that was the pondering my orb meme with the Las Vegas sphere. There you go. And there it is. Yep. All right. Us, us Mario brothers are going to read from you guys. Yes. Starting with people who left comments from last week's Wolf Den podcast over on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Wolf Den podcast. Wolf Den, Wolf Den Zobcast. <laughs> Kanye East. Ah, wow. The good one. <laughs> must, be, must be the brother of, of the other one. Really the best podcast out there. Hey, oh, ringing endorsement shucks. from Kanye East. Sith Ed says, someone hurt Bob in Mario Party and it's clear. <laughs> Was I going off about Mario yes, Party last yes. week? It's a fucking garbage game. <laughs> Snake Eater Gaming. I think I know him, says, I'm just happy the MGS Master Collection exists. I don't have access to emulation. I also, yes, you do. I also <laughs> don't have my childhood PS2 or PS3. I've never even played MGS1. <gasps> His name is Snake Eater on all wow. platforms. Uh, and now I finally have the opportunity. A new generation of gamers can also play Metal Gear for the first time. Did Konami do the bare minimum porting these games? Yes, I'm just happy these games are finally on current gen consoles and the series isn't dead. I'm excited for MGS Master Collection Volume 2. How do I get you a copy of Snake uh, of uh, Twin Snakes? He needs to play Twin Snakes. You have, you have to buy a copy of Twin Snakes, which is like expensive now. I, I want to give him a ROM. Okay. <laughs> How I want to know how he doesn't have access to emulation. I need I need to get him set up with uh with Twin Snakes yeah. immediately. Cause that is the way. Give me the ROM. Whis whisper me on 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 Twitch. <laughs> I don't have a computer. No Fuck PC. It. How are you watching me on yeah. on your phone? 
This and, and is it Android? Yeah. And which it's... Android phone? <laughs> anyway, uh, David Peterson says, what if Nintendo is waiting for the Switch to break the record for the most video game consoles ever sold? And then with an added jolt of marketing from the feat achieved, they announce the next Switch console. That would make sense to me. I don't know. I don't think Nintendo would want to wait. I think there's too many moving parts to wait yeah. for something that's uh, uh, un... like... You can't, like, pinpoint exactly when that's going to happen. Yeah. You know? You, you also, like, the way technology moves, like, you can't... You know, there's only so long you could sell, like, a six-year-old uh, video game console before, like, the quality drops off, before developers stop developing for it because the games they want to make are too ambitious for what the switch can do yeah so there's going to come a point where you know they just they have to upgrade and i don't think they're going to wait for some arbitrary number to happen uh caleb fox says i'd like to think that nintendo's emphasis on the account system implies backwards compatibility but knowing nintendo they're going to say something like hey guys you only get to transfer all of your silver points (laughs) isn't that cool there's potential for that there is they really spent the, the last six years of r&d figuring out how you can move these coins this over to your dumb the, the, if we hadn't made it clear the silver points are dumb and stupid and i don't like them they should just be gold points because you can actually use those towards games yes instead of dumb trinkets that they say are free but you still have to spend five dollars on shipping yes uh charlie fenn says i started listening to this on audible and accidentally we are we're on audible yes <laughs> and accidentally tapped the two times speed button as will was talking about being hungry i thought somehow i had gone on to alvin and the chipmunks with all the <laughs> high-pitched talk about cookies and other snacks yeah, that was pretty early in the industry yeah and bob got the cookies after you ate all of the cookies. I did eat all the you cookies. Ate every I was cookie. very hungry. If it made you feel better, I felt like shit when I got home. We had so many trick or treaters all day. Actually, it was yeah. from like four o'clock to seven o'clock, and then just dead yeah. stop at seven o'clock. I'm pissed because that's when Hannah came home, and I wanted her to answer the fucking door <laughs> for once. Uh, also, Charlie Fenn has been uh, messaging me on Threads when I remember that app exists. Uh, she wanted me to bring up the. Uh, the thing that's going on with the uh, Disney's version of Animal Crossing, how it was gonna go, f- I forgot what it was. It was gonna go free to play, but then it didn't. Oh, I heard that. That all the DL- has a lot of weird bullshit. It's still gotta like buy all the DLC stuff and whatnot. So I didn't look into it, but thank you for reminding me. Threads exists. <laughs> <laughs> I jump in there every once in a while. Yeah, I appreciate it. I, I I went in there. That's how I found out uh, a lot of the behind the scenes stuff for the iPhone yeah. because uh, they were posting about it on Threads. Yeah. I'm finding I'm because I'm I also now I'm on Blue Sky because I'm cool and <laughs> like there's not a lot going on there like if that feels like a dead app to me where th- there's actually like some like things happening on threads I don't believe in Blue Sky okay or or Mastodon or any of that I, stuff. I definitely don't believe in Mastodon I believe in in threads yeah if 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 uh, Twitter ceases to exist tomorrow I think threads is the next one yeah I don't. I mean, I like the idea of Blue Sky and Mastodon because it's not, you know, right. the big conglomerate social media thing. But yeah. everybody already has Facebook and Instagram, yeah. so it's just the easier way to go. Uh, Bob probably gave out handheld emulators to the trick-or-treaters. You know what I did? <laughs> I, I Did I say this already? I was giving out... Um, I did say this at yeah. the very beginning. I was giving out uh, Tokyo Treat stuff. You know what it was? I was I had a, a bunch of candy and I was like, oh, I got plenty of candy. Yeah. And then some teenagers were like, uh, how many can we take? And I was like, whatever. And they're like, really? And he took like uh, massive handfuls. And I said, yeah. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> From then on, I started saying one or two. Because I thought I was going to run out. Google Circles was the best. Too bad Google sucks and killed it. That was that and me verse. Google Circles? I remember Google Plus. Yeah, Google I don't remember Plus. Circles. Was that a part of Circles? I think it eventually... I think Circles turned into Plus. Maybe. Hey, Will, what can Marvel do to save the MCU? Um, I feel like it's shrinking? Sinking? Sinking. Stop 
<laughs> Stop making it? Just, like, take a break. Like, that. I feel like that would, like, help out a lot, honestly. Like Disney's after, saturating everything right now. They really are. They are, and it's it's not good. Like, after Secret Wars comes out, like, just don't don't put out a movie for five years. It's fine. Yeah, Relax. give give it a give, yeah. give it a rest. The, the reason why it worked so well is because of the slow ramp up. They got everybody hooked on it because yeah. it was so exciting when a new Marvel movie came out. Yeah. Now like everything has to be an Avengers level threat and like that just dampens the you know, the excitement that comes with these movies. Yeah. Also too, the fact that, you know, it used to be like, you know, one to two movies a year. Then it was three movies a year. Now it's four movies a year plus five TV shows you have to watch. Yeah. Somebody also asked, that, are you enjoying Loki? I'm not watching Loki. I have not seen Loki yet. I have not seen Ant-Man yet. I kind of want to see Loki. I've, Loki looks pretty good. Yeah, it does look good. I barely got through Secret Invasion. That was not good. That was a big disappointment. I haven't seen... I heard a, that that was bad. I haven't seen Ahsoka yet. Like, I just... I have not... Ahsoka's top of my list. I got to watch Ahsoka. How, how many hours of Clone Wars and Rebels have you put in? Zero. I'm not watching any of this. <laughs> so then you're I'd probably not going to like Ahsoka. Right um well luke's in it anakin's in it is Lu luke has to be in it no why would luke be in it because he he talked to ahsoka in one episode of book of boba fett <laughs> yes the whole no <laughs> they the, made it seem like there was a whole thing going the whole, on no, there the whole show the whole ahsoka from a guy who has not seen it yet is basically just a continuation of what dave filoni was doing on clone wars and rebels which means Anakin Skywalker, which means Sabine, yeah, but doesn't it take place? Ezra. Doesn't it take place at the same time of uh, as Book of Boba Fett or around that time period? Yes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. No. That's Luke time, baby. But Luke doesn't show up. The only original trilogy character that shows up is three PO. That sucks. <laughs> Nobody wants that. He, Nobody PO, wants that. Three PO shows up with a message from Leia. So it's not okay. like well, I, I might like that. I might like that. Well, because they couldn't CGI carry Fisher onto screen, so they had, like, oh, let's use three PO. He's inoffensive. Okay. Okay. Uh, I also have to finish the second half of Andor. I heard that's when it gets good. You get, yeah, you get, yeah. And honestly, like, I know I said a lot of things about Andor that like I wasn't as high on it as like everyone else is, but like the more I think about it, I think it might just be like. It's not the best Star Wars ever, but like it's certainly the best Star Wars television event since Man Mandalorian season one. Yeah. I mean, I liked it. Yeah. But uh, everybody says the best part is when I stopped watching. So Yeah, no, it is. <laughs> um, Bob, who's your favorite droid? What's my favorite droid? Guy from Rogue One was cool. Oh, K2SO? Yeah, it's yeah. Cool. I don't know. I'm old school, so I prefer 3PO and R2. Although I do like BB-8. I know people give him I flack, would, but I, I do like BB-8. I agree. I would uh, say R2. Yeah. R5-D4. <laughs> That's the old school answer. Yeah. Back before they had all these fucking droids. <laughs> uh... Bob, is your Xbox emulation video still up to date in terms of how to emulate on Xbox? Snake Eater said they have an Xbox Series S and X. It's a little complicated. I wouldn't want to throw somebody in to that experience, you know? To, to, to... It's not that easy to emulate on an, an Xbox Series S. If you know about emulation, sure. But if it's your first emulation experience, I wouldn't recommend it. Um. All right, we're it's late. Goodbye. Mm, yeah, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolfden Podcast is every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on twitchtv slash Wolfden. If you can't make the show for any reason at all, we always put it up as an archive version over on our YouTube channel, YouTube.com/slash Wolfden Podcast, so you can go and check us out over there on demand whenever you want. If you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on any and every audio podcast platform including audible including no matter audible. where you get this show from folks please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all of those respective platforms yeah man uh also nintendo stan thanks for the three months another great stream super wolfed in bros thanks dude Thank and uh big fat daddy thanks for the subscription 
Uh, I guess right now you could all go watch AJ. Sure, why not? He's doing a spooky smash stream. Ooh. Hey, he's not in a costume. <laughs> go accost him for not being Yell in a costume. Yell at him for not being in a costume. Uh, I'll see you probably Thursday. I don't think I'll see you tomorrow. I want to work on a video. But I'll see you Thursday. Uh, bye. Bye.